and that he's definitely a guy that talks a bunch of mess and I like, you know, kidding around with him and everything. Sure. So those are the two things that come to my mind. We when it comes to that. Yeah, and we talk about Sioux City a lot, but really when you get up in that northern part of the country and, and you have the teams like Omaha, who this is their 20th year, and you get into Sioux City, boy, those two have been doing battle forever. It really is, and I always encourage people, man, if you're going to make a road trip and you're going to go see football games out of Salina, those are the top two places to go in my mind. I mean, they're great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the atmosphere at Omaha is second to none. Um, they have these those cowbells and different things going on. Their fans are, you know, crazy. I mean, it's it's definitely a great environment. And for those who haven't seen it, it would be good, you know, in this, that next week here after this game up there at Wichita to come check us out up there because it is a different environment. Um, if we could get that type, we're starting to get that way here. Right, right. But that place has been like that. I mean, they played at three or four different buildings, but the same fans come with the cowbells, the horns and everything. So it's definitely fun competing with those guys. So basically what we're telling fans is we're giving you two weeks to plan your trip to Omaha because it'll be the 15th. So that's be there. <laughs> it's, yeah, be there or be square, as they say. <laughs> there you go. But let's look at this matchup tonight. I know it's going to be a little bit weird for you because you're going to look across the, the field here, so to speak, at the other bench. You're going to see about a half a dozen guys that were on your roster last year and helped you resurrect this program here in Salina. Is there any certain thing that you're looking at in this game? I know turnovers are always a big thing. Penalties last week were huge for you guys. A lot of flags in the first half. All of a sudden, you just shut the penalty faucet off in the second half, and that kept the game clean for you, was able to help you get back to that lead. What do you look at in this game? What's the main thing that you and your coaching staff is saying, boy, if we do this tonight, we have a really good chance? Well, you have to contain Bernard. You have to contain Bray. Um, be t to have any chance against them offensively and then Bray also kick returning um, defensively keeping it you know don't let Dudley make the play to beat yeah. you he's one of those guys that is a supreme defensive back always has always will be um, so those are the keys I would say of this game well, you heard it from the ho head coach right there. It is Haran O'Neill, his guys, getting ready to not only defend their home building here but make a push for the Northern Division as they take on the Omaha Beef here tonight. Coach, best of luck to you. And we'll try to catch you at halftime. You've been getting a really good sprint away from Brian, and he's not going to catch it. So. <laughs> Especially up and down the steps. I know how that goes. <laughs> but we, al we always know, too, if, if you're going to the locker room and you're a few points behind at halftime, sometimes it's just better to let you go. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> true. Probably wouldn't be the happiest of campers going to that <laughs> locker room with that going on. Well, good luck tonight. We'll, we'll plan on check catching at halftime here tonight. How's that? Sounds great. Rod O'Neill, head coach of the Salina Liberty. His guys tonight here at home. You still have a few minutes to get out. Let's see you in the seats here at Tony's Pizza Event Center as we get ready for Omaha Beef and the Liberty here on KINA. Comfort Heating and Air and Salina Post are proud to announce the Good Neighbor Award, sharing stories of friendship and kindness right here in our community. Go to Salina Post now and nominate someone you know. It could be a coach that donates their time for your team or a neighbor that helps walk your furry friend. Each week, we'll give away one of Robbie's famous cheesecakes to say thank you to your nominee. It's the Good Neighbor Award on Salina Post with the company that cares, Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're Comfort Heating and Air. If your family has been fighting sickness this past winter, you should think about getting your carpets cleaned. Hi, I'm Quentin Cole, owner of Cole Strong Carpet Cleaning. Having your carpets cleaned is an important factor in fighting sickness and bacteria, especially with children in your home. We offer a variety of services and would be happy to provide you with a free estimate. See our story and learn more about Cole Strong Carpet Cleaning at C-O-L-E strongcarpet.com. Professional service that treats you like family. Ava, why are you sitting in mom's car? Because, Noah, I'm Testing, hungry. testing. And every Monday we go to rib cramp where kids 12 and under eat free all day. Ava, mom and dad love their menu, and I like the ribs. Ava, they get my fingers gooey. <laughs> Ava, what, Noah? I like Mondays at rib crib too, but today's Saturday. You're just a couple of days away. Two free kids' entrees with each adult entree purchase all day Mondays at Rib Crib in Salina on South 9th in front of Lowe's. Gentlemen, you step up, up your and shake hands. Spring? Think about your garage door. In most cases, your garage door is 50% of your home's front facade and curb appeal. It's also your home's smile, if you will. This month, when you buy a new garage door from Overhead Door Company, you will get a 50% discount on all decorative hardware. Take a look at your garage door now. Then make that call to Overhead Door Company. Omaha. Central Kansas. In you Salina are the visiting team. Or visit them on the web at OBCNCK.com. The, the head. 
the teams, the name or the is tails. JJ Lawn Care. What's your call? Today and fool you. It's the not call just lawns tails. they care about, it's their Officer customers. Officer Kyle JJ Jacobs Lawn will now do the flip. The call is tails. With people in and around Salina on more than just lawns. The spring season is here, and now is the time head. to act for a healthy, lush lawn. Call now for free estimate on a four or six-step program. Let JJ Lawn Care come to the rescue for your fescue. Salina has won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. Omaha will receive. Good luck. Have you thought about upgrading your vehicle but hate spending all day at a dealership that does not value your time? Hi, Chris Sherburn with Bennett Buick GMC, personally inviting you in to see how car buying should be. With our no-pressure, non-commissioned sales staff, our upfront pricing, and an award-winning service department, I am confident you will choose us for your next vehicle. Our best price guarantee and high trading values, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. Stop in and see us at 651 South Ohio or visit us on the web 24 hours a day at BennettBuickGMC.com. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Welcome back into Tony's Pizza Event Center, and happy June to you. Devin Haney along with Russ Kossel. Also, Brian Berner on the field. Big Sam Pretty producing and engineering as we get ready for a North Division matchup. And it's a big one tonight as the Salina Liberty plays their final home game of the 2019 season. They will be taking on the Omaha Beef. Omaha comes in with a 7-1 and one record. Salina comes in with a 5-3 and three record. Salina, you may remember, started the season going 1-2 and two in their first three games. Since then, if you do the simple math, they are now 4-1 and one in their last five games. And, Russ, we talked about it quite a bit last week. It could be a streak here now for Salina where if they get on a little bit of a run starting here last week against the Sioux City Bandits, they could finish the season very, very strong and getting them into the playoffs on a strong note. Yeah, it's big for Salina to get get off on the right foot. You said last week against Sioux City and now tonight against Omaha. And we'll, we'll see tonight, you know, because we took play Omaha twice in, in three weeks, so it, it'll be huge here to, to get this home game under our belts before we go to Wichita next weekend. Salina went out. They had the captains of Andrew Jackson, the quarterback, and reigning offensive player of the week in Champions Indoor Football, Kamali Matthews, along with Travis Taylor and Tracy Brooks. They won the toss. They deferred to the second half, and now Jimmy Allen will kick it away. It's a little low-line drive squib kick that angles off to the left-hand side, bounces up against the wall, and it's going to be returned by Antonio Bray. Bray looking for space, keeps it on the right-hand side of the wall, and he will come out past the 15-yard line where he is taken down by Tracy Brooks. Also, Clinton Solomon on that stop as well. Actually, excuse me, that's Frankie Solomon. Brian, we will see the other Solomon, Clinton Solomon, coming up here. The free on the kick Omaha hit the offense. wall. The ball yeah, will be placed at the five-yard line. First that down. ball actually bounced, hit the wall inside the five, so wipe out the turn. Ball will be placed at the five-yard line for the beat. So very good kickoff there by Jimmy Allen, who we saw last week really finish the game strong. He got off to a little bit of a shaky start, missed an extra point early on. But after that, he was very, very good in that contest, especially with its kickoffs. So we will see former Liberty quarterback Derek Bernard coming out here for his first snaps of the game, wearing an Omaha jersey in this building. Derek Bernard has been with the Omaha Beef after a midseason. Please reset the game clock to 1457. 61% of his passes for 154 yards per game. He has kept the turnover count low, which was always a concern here in Salina when he was the quarterback for Ron O'Neill. 18 touchdowns against just two interceptions and no fumbles for the Omaha quarterback so far, Derek Bernard. Shotgun, empty backfield. Bernard steps up in the pocket. He lets one rip down the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. Bouncing behind and low, his intended receiver that time, Javon Bell. And Javon was covered on that play by Frankie Solomon, Jr. The rushing game, a bit of a concern tonight. Omaha does have a very fantastic fleet of receivers, but it's the two-headed monster in the running game of Calvin Phillips and the leading rusher on this team, Antonio Bray. Here's a little screen pass out. This time to Bray. That's where he gets most of his yardage on offense as he takes the little screen pass out for a seven-yard gain. And it will be a third down and three coming up here for the Omaha Beat as they move the football out to the 12-yard line. Big third down here as Omaha tends to speed it up a little bit, being only 35% on third down. We'll see what Salina can do. 
Here's a screen pass, actually a pass right over the middle of the field. It's going to be good for a first down by at least a yard as it was a frozen rope thrown by Derek Bernard that time to his receiver, Donovan Raspberry, one of the former Salina Liberty players on this team. There's going to be about a half a dozen names that Salina fans will recognize now on the revamped roster of Omaha. Now you see the beef going hurry up here as they wait on the chains to get set after that first down out of the 12-yard line. And there are two beef receivers 15 yards downfield and the ball not snapped as of yet. We were waiting course, for the, the chains to get blow. set. There is no and foul on the play. Was ever set First down. That time for the Omaha offense, so no penalty. So White Hat had his hand up waiting for the chain gang to get back. Derek Bernard trying to get in his hurry up, just, just really didn't have time to push it there. So nobody hurt. Back to first down. First down and 10 after that. Little pass over the middle of the field. Bernard, this time a quarterback keeper. He's going to run it himself. Angles out to the right-hand side. Has the first down across midfield. Still running. And then hit hard from behind by Naquan Thomas. He's going to take it all the way down to the six-yard line where it's going to be first down beef. It'll be first and goal at about the six or seven-yard line, determining where they put this football down. And that was a designed clear-out run that time, Brian, for Derek Bernard. It was designed play. And the one thing, let's look at last year. I have no issues giving him that ball because he loves to hold that thing out. We've seen him lose possession at the goal line many a time last season. Our defense will be aware of that, and they'll look to get that extra hit on the quarterback. One thing we talked about early was the turnovers with Derek Bernard. So far, he has been relatively turnover-free, calling the signals for the beef. Here's the first designed run by a running back up the gut. This time, Antonio Bray will take it off the right side, and he will plunge ahead for about a yard and a half. And it will be first, or excuse me, second goal now at the six-yard line for the Omaha Beef offense. The Beef wearing all black jerseys with the orange shoulder pads, upper body, bright white numerals, and the black helmet with the iconic Beef logo on the side of the helmet. Slide of Liberty in their home dark blue jerseys, pants, and helmet with that Liberty L on the side of the hat. Just underway, opening drive. This time Phillips, once again, the lone setback. Bernard will give him the football. Angles off to the left. He's hit by Detroit Matthews at the, at the four. Phillips will take it ahead to about the three. Phillips, one of those running backs for us. He's a load. He's not that tall, and he runs with a low center of gravity and a lot of power in those legs. Yeah, you know, I, we saw him out there warming up, compared him a lot to Tracy Brooks, the, the style that they have in the running game. Third down and goal from the three. Bernard back to pass, flushed out of the pocket. Now running, he's going to loft one up to the end zone. It's out of bounds into the Liberty bench area. Closest receiver that time for the Omaha Beef was Javon Bell. And that'll bring up a fourth down now for the Beef as Derek Bernard comes over to talk to his offensive coach. Looks like Omaha going to go for it here on fourth down on their opening drive. It's fourth and goal, and this snap will come from just outside of the two-yard line. Yeah, and you talk about fourth down here, a huge play for Salina. And going back, Omaha is 13 for 18 on fourth downs, which is first in the CIF. So very high numbers on fourth down. So kind of a no-brainer here for Coach for Omaha to, to leave the offense out there. Play clock already down to five as Omaha just broke the huddle. Bernard taking his time. They're going to run out of time here, and Omaha's going to have to burn a timeout. They were very nonchalant about getting in the huddle and then time breaking out. the huddle. Omaha, they didn't their break first the of the half. There was about five or 30 six seconds time left out. on the play clock. And they're going to have to burn their first time out of the game with 10.45 left to play here in the first quarter. Omaha coming in after a victory last week. It was a hard-fought battle against the Oklahoma Flying Aces. And Omaha ends up winning that game as they take the season sweep over the Aces. And Omaha now 3-0 against the expansion Oklahoma team this season. They also have two wins against Wichita. They also have a win against the Texas Revolution. You add them up, you say, well, that's six. They also got a four-foot victory against Texas after the Revolution folded, and their lone win in that 7-1 and record came against Sioux City. There's been talk of the lack of com competition, if you will, in the Omaha schedule. I don't know how far I want to take that because I think anytime you win in this league, it's valuable, but it is glaring about the bottom side of the teams. When you combine the records from Oklahoma and Wichita, they're combined 2-14. and 14. Here's a pass to the end zone. It's going to be a back shoulder throw and a very good throw from Derek Bernard. It'll be a touchdown for the Omaha Beef, and it goes over to his intended receiver and the target all the way. It is Kanye Farquharson. Farquharson makes the touchdown right there in the left-hand corner of the end zone. Brian, what would you see? Yeah, that was just one of those things. Farquharson just kind of went in, posted up just across the goal line. 
Bernard just put it right on the money. Not much as a defensive back you could do to try to defend that. One of those throws, either it's going to sail out of bounds or your receiver is going to turn around and make the throw. And it was a very good connection that time from Derek Bernard. His first touchdown of the day. Extra point pending, and it's a bad snap. Bernard has it, though. Stay in front of him. Jake Latimer chasing. Bernard gets out. He takes a big hit from Latimer, and it's picked off. Liberty have it. They're going to go the whole way, and it's going to be a return for the Liberty. And Derek Bernard standing on the 20-yard line on the seat of his pants with his hands in the air as Jake Latimer plowed directly through Derek Bernard. And the pick for points coming from the Liberty defensive back, the former Jayhawk, Isaiah Barfield. You know, we've been waiting to call Isaiah's name in a big in a big way and you know coming up with two points there holding Omaha to that bad snap and like you said back to Derek Bernard getting flushed out on that bad snap Jake Latimer just just I mean he, he put it right in his chin and Derek Bernard wanted something I don't, I don't know what he wanted but nonetheless a big turnover Brian we talked a little bit in three game about Bernard's you can call it inability, ability, whatever, to hang on to the football a little touch too long. And the quickness of these bookends for Salinas defense and Taylor and Latimer, we didn't see Latimer pull up on that play at all. No, not at all. And, and that's one of the things I think the game plan going in. You know, if Salina can force Bernard out of that pocket, try to chase him down, the ability to make good decisions kind of decreases. That was one of those things. Well, all the credit in the world, Isaiah had that thing played perfectly. He was able to jump in and get it to go the distance. The only downfall is on that point after. You put in all that work, you'd like the entire six points. On the point after, they get the two. So what should be a seven-point gap right now is only four as Isaiah Barfield has a return. And now this football going off the top of the wall goes out of bounds into the Liberty bench area. The free well, kick went over the wall. The ball be placed at the 25-yard line. First down. You said that the Liberty defense doesn't have a return for a touchdown this year. They've been really, really close a lot of times, especially in the last two home games. But Liberty's defense has not returned for a score. I think we can classify that as a good defensive return for a score off of a turnover by Isaiah Barfield. Yeah, you, you could go ahead and score that one up because, like you said, we talked about before, Salina, the only team out of the eight, well, now seven left after Texas folded, the only team left without a defensive score of any type at all. Ryan's got some company down there. Are you going to have a guest commentator on this? I should. I got my man Dietre with me right, right beside me. Tell you what, it's already kind of starting. You look out there, Desmond Reed is trying to instigate all kinds of stuff right now. Fortunately, the officials kind of reading into it told him he better cut it out. After that kick that went over the wall, Salina will have it at midfield. Tracy Brooks right up the gut will have one, maybe two yards on the play. Desmond Reed, speaking of him, he is the leading tackler on this Omaha beef defense. 46 tackles coming into this game on the season, leads the team. He has five tackles for loss, but nobody on this Omaha team has more than two sacks. That's Javion Williams, who leads the team with just two sacks. There are, though, a trio of defensive backs that have three interceptions each, so they get it done on the back end. On the interception route, here's the delay to Tracy Brooks. That's a quick little pump fake by Andrew Jackson. Brooks will take it ahead to the 16-yard line. He's very close to a first down, and that time leading the way, the snowplow, if you will, is Kamali Matthews. It's kind of hard to talk about a snowplow in almost 90-degree weather for the first time here in Salina today. Yeah, you know, that's, that's one guy you would want to follow if you're Tracy Brooks to follow. We don't talk about him a whole lot, but he does an exceptional job up front as it brings up third and short for Salina. Third down and one for the Liberty. Ball setting at the Omaha 16-yard line. 9-18 left to go here, first quarter. It's an option play. Jackson collects the defender. Pitch out to Brooks. Tracy, like a pinball, off of two defenders. Bounces to the outside, and it's a touchdown. Tracy Brooks leads the league in rushing and touchdowns, and he gets another one right there. His 15th touchdown of the season, and he did all the work on that one. His blocking downfield helped out, but it was Tracy Brooks pinballing his way and a hand grenade celebration for the Liberty in the end zone. Brian, you're not going to see it done much better than that. Tracy did a good job finding the blocks, just kind of hugging the wall right there in front of the party pit area. Found just enough room to get it down into the end zone. Great work. Great first drive by the offense. Liberty now looking at the final seconds of their play clock after the celebration. 
Jimmy Allen asking for a play clock reset, and he was denied. Play clock down to two. Here comes a snap from Kelvin McCoy. Back to Brooks. Allen pokes it through. And again, skirmishes after the snap. Media timeout. Light Media. And not very serious. But with 9.09 left to go in the first quarter, each team has had a possession. Salina has scored twice. One on defense special teams and one on offense via Tracy Brooks. It's eight to, or excuse me, nine to six Liberty. 9.09 left to go first quarter. We're just underway. More indoor football coming up after this on KINA. supports five area high schools providing their athletes the highest quality most timely care at the school on the field or in our clinic we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic the home field advantage starts here visit us at Salina Regional Sports Medicine.com Listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 909 left to go here in the first quarter. And each team has had possession of the football. It comes out with a 9 to 6 result in favor of the Salina Liberty. But guys, we can already see the intensity of this game. Both teams know there's a lot on the line. And I also have to go back to you. Haran O'Neill and I talked about this a little bit in pregame when I talked to the Liberty head coach. Not only is this game head to head very, very important. But you also have to be looking over your shoulder just a little bit at the Sioux City Bandits because you know they're not done. They made a strong push last year, ended up getting into the playoffs and actually eliminated Salina from the playoffs in the postseason. you got to look at this, though. I mean, I know when you look at Omaha, they win this game. They're coming out here 8-1, and one, but they still have at Amarillo next week. Then they go home to host Salina again and Sioux City. They're not safe either. I think this is one of those games, no matter where the teams are sitting in the division, boy, you really, really – would like to come out of here with a win, and I think whoever does is going to have the momentum too. There's people chattering, saying Omaha hasn't played anybody. Please don't plug. Liberty, you come out of this game, the North and all of a sudden now in your last play six, clock, you're five and one. The play clock will be kept momentum. on the field. And I just think you can't discount and say these are the two teams that are going to play in the North because Sioux City's still hanging around. Yeah, I think like you talk about the the seesaw effect of the back and forth that could happen in the North Division. You know, this this game right here could lead the momentum towards one way or the other. Jimmy Allen with his second kickoff. This one's going to take a bounce and land right into the hands of a return man for the Omaha Beef. Looking for space. He's going to find some, but it's only momentarily before he is absolutely road graded by a Liberty return man coming in through. We'll see who that was. Can't find a number until we find out it's Winston Green. He leads the team in interceptions, and that time he laid a big hit on the return man for the Omaha Beef and Chris Perry. Okay. Guys, one thing that's come up, one of the play clocks has gone down, so the officials have now removed both play clocks, and the time will be kept on the field. So that's one added thing that the uh, coach and the quarterback are going to have to watch the back judge for that countdown. Derek Bernard out for the second time. Got a touchdown on a throw to the left-hand corner of the end zone. On his first possession, empty backfield again. Four wide receivers looking downfield. He rips it to the receiver. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Shaking the tackle and dancing in the end zone is Omaha's leading receiver, Javon Bell. Javon has just scored his eighth touchdown of the year, and that was a beautiful throw by Derek Bernard and a frozen rope that ends up in a touchdown for the Omaha Beef. Yeah, Derek Bernard couldn't have threw that any better. You know, let him right right just enough room before it got to the near side of the wall as we're looking at it just one play at missed tackle and you know nobody else left within five yards of the end zone so nonetheless a great strike by Derek Bernard saw a bad snap on the last extra point attempt Zeke Arriello is now 41 for 49 on extra points this will be his 50th attempt this season placement is down by Derek Bernard the kick is up and it's no good 0 for 2 now on extra point attempts by the Omaha Beef special teams. They leave another point on the board, and they remain in a field goal lead of 12 to 9 with 8.38 left to go. 
Yeah, it seems like we've seen a lot of excitement early in this game. With still 8.38 to go in the first quarter. You know, there's been a, a lot going on, on, you know, with a defensive turnover already on special teams. And, you know, both teams driving seemingly unmatched down the field with both Omaha possessions and the one possession Salina has with their second yet to come. You know, we talked about the defensive backs where we, Salina has now feel like they have the align, the defensive backs that they've wanted to where they can be in this secondary and pick, kind of picking them apart early to see what adjustments can be made. Brian, a lot of conversation now going on between the lead official. We always refer to him as the white hat, if you will. And he's went over and directly spoke to Andrew Jackson, the Liberty quarterback, about how to monitor play calling. And basically, it's high school rules. He said, watch the back judge. He'll stop to drop his hand when you get in the last final seconds of your play clock. And that's how you're going to know to get the ball off. So good communication there between the officials and these quarterbacks here for Omaha and Salina with no play clocks in the arena. Yeah, regardless of what some people say, these, these officials... 100% professional in what they do. Marilo will kick it off here to the Liberty. It's going to be taken and angling off to the right-hand side. This is going to be the first touch as a Liberty receiver slash return man by the new guy in the building. His name is Daniel McKinney. We have not talked about Daniel McKinney a lot. A receiver for Omaha last year in his first game active with the Salina Liberty this year. Wanted to play for Salina last year, but his job took him into the Omaha area. He ended up settling on the beef team, but he did play for Coach Ron O'Neill back in the Dodge City Law days. So these two very familiar with each other, and we talked about Clinton Solomon being an addition on the Omaha roster, maybe one of the best receivers in the league. I think Daniel McKinney is also one of those guys that you could put up for one of those nominations. Liberty out for their second drive of the contest. They have an empty right side of the field. They're loaded up on the left-hand side. Bubble screen out to McKinney. Lots of contact, and he drops the football. Omaha saying they have it. Brian, I'll defer to you. You have a much better look at this than I do. Yeah, it looked like uh, Omaha did come up with that ball. McKinney had it jarred loose, and Trey Dudley was right there to pick it up. McKinney's trying to fight uh, for the call, saying that he did come in contact with the wall first. Result of the play is a fumble like recovered by finish. Omaha. First down. So McKinney's second touch as a Liberty player. Not that great. By the way, Clinton Solomon for Omaha. He played last week with them. That was his first game in an Omaha roster. Only had two catches. They were both touchdowns. Yeah, he's always deadly wherever he plays at. You know, he's a big receiver, got real soft hands, and just, just an excellent at that position. Not on the field right now for the beef. They're going to run it off the right-hand side, off the tackle. They're going to go from the 20 to the 15. It's a gain of five on first down, and that'll bring up second down and five. In the first quarter, 12 to 9, Omaha, who now has a gift possession by the Liberty as they turn it over. And we talk about this all the time too, Russ. Not only was it a turnover, but it was a turnover on first down. That's just a killer. Second run to the right-hand side. This once again, Antonio Bray, and hard road to hoe inside that time as he's going to get a yard. And that will bring up third down and three. And again, we go back to the stat that you have. Omaha just hasn't been very good this year on third down. Yeah, Omaha 20 for 57 for 35 percent, worse than the league. You know, some some that I just kind of picked up on the last couple plays since this turnover is offensive lineman Warren Dent for the Omaha beef seems to be trying to extend the play a little more than when it's over. So it might be something to watch out. Nonetheless, you know, the three front guys of Salina have got their work cut out for them tonight. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Warren Dent was one of the dispersal draft acquisitions. Here's Bernard back to throw. Little hesitation play. He's going to go up to the end zone, and Francis Flax, the closest Liberty team member, if you will, to that football. <laughs> it went way out of bounds. And that time, Bernard, just a little head and shoulder twitch, Brian, but he froze Naquan Thomas, who was coming on the blitz. Yeah, he wanted to get rid of that thing quick. And you know, I think the, the intention was he looked like he had a receiver going, but uh, that ball went high enough. No question he was going to head out of bounds. Play clock's back up and working. Another fourth down here for the Omaha Beef. This time extended a little further out. They're at the 14-yard line. They need to cross the 10. Bad snap. It's over Bernard's head, but it bounces right to him. He's going to unload it to the end zone and overthrows it. It nearly went in the upper deck, and a turnover on downs now as the Omaha Beef had a bad snap, and there's a flag on the play right at the 25-yard line. So now we got to check the flag. There was also a defensive back for the Liberty and a holding. receiver from Omaha. Number 72, offense. That was tangled up on the That penalty is declined. 
The Gopher plays an incomplete pass, first down. So the Liberty Salina. will take over in decent field position here, guys, at their own 14-yard line. You know, holding call once again going back to the guy who's been trying to extend the plays and seems to be getting beat as Warren Dent again gets caught with the hold as, you know, just a terrible snap. And you look it over against the wall, Antonio Bray kind of lit up, you know, a, a would-be defender back there. I couldn't quite see the number from this far, but clearly the ball nowhere near that side of the field. So the Liberty now coming out, they will have a possession. It will be their third one after turning it over on their last possession on just their first play. It was a first down play out to Daniel McKinney, and he coughed it up. McKinney is solo on the left-hand side. Jackson back to pass. Let's it rip down the middle of the field. This picked off. Boy, read perfectly by Omaha that time. Looking for McKinney, and they're going to say incomplete. Diving over the receiver that time was Trey Dudley. And he made a spectacular effort but couldn't come up with it. And Omaha nearly took another one away. Liberty dodged a bullet. And Brian, I go back to the conversation you and I had last year with Trey Dudley. He has played college football at a very high level. Played at UMass. Great young man. Very athletic. So he's got the ability. He's not the biggest guy out there. But the athleticism he brings to the table makes up for a lot of that. Receivers going in motion. They're going to have detractors and give it to Tracy Brooks. Brooks into the second level. Rolls over a defensive back from Omaha. He's across the 20 and out of the 22 and a half yard line. Tracy Brooks has just turned a second and 10 into a third and a half a yard. Yeah, Tracy Brooks, like we talk about every week, week in and week out, as hard as he runs downhill. And he was met about five at five yards by three beef players and then a little help for him from Salina to give him that extra push to have a short third down. 4.38 left to go here first quarter. Third and short for the Liberty. They're loaded up on the left-hand side. They'll run away from that strength to Brooks again. There's a flag on the play as Kamali Matthews is laying on top of one of the defensive linemen for Omaha. Now there's a flag in the second level as well at the feet of Kelvin McCoy. This may be a play over down here for the Liberty. They may have to be pushed back and replay this third down. Yeah, it appeared we had a hold out here at the line of scrimmage and then a... a Lyman downfield with a late, late hit, and the Omaha defender back there is not really quite sure what's going on, but neither are we, to, to say the least, as the official still down there discussing it. Brian, we have saw on both sides these offensive linemen for both Omaha and Salina doing a lot of work. There are two field. fouls, both on the offense, holding number 92. Go on the offense. And you're That's attacked. a 10-yard penalty. Also, personal foul, the number 70. The Half There's the distance to the goal. Down. Still, it's first it's down. It's going to go back to playing under control. Repeat, third down. You know, how much outside of the normal are they going to try to bring into that? And, and that's the times, I think, when some of these penalties could come up. And this one's a monster third. because it, it doesn't select one penalty and the other. It's both. It is holding first and then post play personal foul on Kelvin McCoy. So that's going to back the Liberty up from the 23 yard line all the way back to the six. They need to get to the 24 for a first down. So it's third and about 18. Jackson back to pass, goes to Pargo. Pargo can't slip the tackle, but he does pick up a good chunk of yardage there. He's going to have about 14 yards on the play and put the football back to the 19-yard line where it's going to be fourth and about five. Yeah, we go back to Salina being 30 for 66 on third down. That one there, you're just trying to get a manageable fourth down. You just, you don't want to try to take it all in one shot and then be forced to kick it from more or less your own end zone with a more manageable fourth and five here. Liberty will keep the offense on the field with Andrew Jackson, the running offensive player of the week in Champions Indoor Football. It's the second time he's won that. Heavy on the left-hand side, all three receivers. Jackson wants it all, going downfield, and he's going to dial up nothing. And he gets knocked to the turf, and both Kelvin McCoy and Haran O'Neill asking for a late hit on that play, but nothing called, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. So after that big exchange where Omaha threw it out of bounds over the end zone wall, and now the Liberty have it, Omaha's right back where they turned the ball over to begin with. All that for nothing. Yeah, when you go back, that fourth down play there, a little a little uh, miscommunication it looked like has had all, all the receivers on one side, and Pargo kind of just broke and went across the middle and overthrown. So you know, we go back to Salina here, a, a, a wish wash on that fourth down play where they overthrew it, and we're right back to where we started. It was still 3.20 left to go in the third quarter. There are other games going on tonight. We'll get you that schedule here after this first down play. 
from the Omaha Beef. 3.20 left to go, first quarter, 12 to 9, Omaha. Two receivers in motion, they split, one to each side. Designed run, read option, Derek Bernard. He gets in the second level, he takes another hard hit from the Liberty. Winston Green coming in to hit, along with Frankie Solomon Jr. Your schedule for tonight, this is a big matchup in the north, but we also have a monster matchup in the south as Amarillo goes into Albuquerque, the Venom, taking on the Duke City Gladiators. Also, Oklahoma at home tonight. They're playing basically the patch-up team for the Texas Revolution and the North Texas Savages, and then at Sioux City, the Wichita Force playing the Bandits tonight. That's your schedule in Champions Indoor Football. Six yards by Derrick Bernard on that first down play. Brings up second down and four. Now it's a pitch out this time to Phillips. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage and then be swarmed after that as he gets back to the line of scrimmage but doesn't gain any. Spent a lot of time in the offensive backfield. That was a pitch out play. And by the time Phillips got the ball, guys, he was already about five yards deep in the offensive backfield. Had a lot of work to make up, and he was able to go for no gain, no loss. Yeah, he was able to shimmy Jake Latimer there, kind of froze Jake a little bit to be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So another crucial third down. It's third down and four for Omaha. Ball setting just outside of the 13-yard line. Empty backfield, Derek Bernard. He bobbles, now he throws a sidearm, and it's incomplete. Coming up, closing on the play for the Salina Liberty was defensive back Kendrick Harper, the former Jayhawk. Comes in and makes a play, slapping that one out of bounds, and it's going to be fourth down. That's a great job by Kendrick Harper. He saw the receiver come right towards his area, timed it perfectly to be able to make that hit just as the ball came in and knock it loose. Little conversation here with Omaha whether they're going to go for it or bring on the field goal team. Some of the field goal members were halfway out on the field, now they're waving back. So Omaha going to go for it here on fourth down and four. Ball at the 13, they need to get inside the 10 and cross the 9 for a new set of downs. Bernard, under pressure, has a slap back in his face, but this is going to be a penalty on Salina. Ooh. They're going to call Travis Taylor being blocked low and hitting the ankles of Derek Bernard. I bet they're going to call Travis Taylor hitting low on, on Derek Bernard. Yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong with the pass tip. Does that nullify anything like that? Not against the quarterback, I don't believe. Personal foul, roughing the passer, low hit on the quarterback. Number 44, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Steam that time and make sure Derek Bernard got rid of the football, but as he came in, call it what you want, either he was blocked or he stumbled. It could have been a little bit of both into the lower legs of Derek Bernard, and that's going to be a free first down for the Omaha Beef. So they keep this drive alive via penalty, and now setting with a first down and goal at about the six yard line. Approaching the final minute of the first quarter. Liberty crowd getting into it here. Empty backfield again for Bernard. Here's a rush. Travis Taylor again, crawling at the ankles. He's gonna hit Bernard as he lets it go and that ball right through the receiver's hands as Travis Taylor turns it up again and he's letting Derek Bernard know he's gonna be here all night long. Yeah, Travis Taylor just bearing down on Derek Bernard to flush him, you know, he had him, flushed him out of the pocket, and fell to his legs, kind of crawled three or four steps, and then got back up. And as Derek Bernard dropped back to throw it, as soon as he released it, just, just corralled him and just threw him to the ground. That ball catchable in the end zone by the Omaha receiver, Brian, but it just went through his glove. Yeah, that was James Swenson wide open. It hit off his pad and bounced away. Swenson listed as a quarterback on the Omaha roster. Here's a screen out to the flat. This time, Omaha trying to get in, and they do. Boy, a lightning quick flag screen over to the right-hand side of the formation by Javon Bell, and Bell takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. Omaha now leading by nine with the extra point pending, 14 seconds on the clock as we go towards the end of the first quarter. Boy, what a beautiful play call and execution that was. Yeah, they could. Coach couldn't have called that any better, that little fly little fly toss out there just with the defender you had one guy out there on the line on the line of scrimmage and one other guy in motion coming behind him and you know just had two lead blockers right there for him he took a shot but not before he was already in the end zone play clock down to four still no snap yet from Omaha they snap it with one Bernard gets it down the kick is up and Omaha finally gets an extra point media timeout media Marillo. 14 seconds left here in the opening quarter, and it's been back and forth, but right now, Omaha leading it. 
You know, we talked about Omaha, how they are on third down at 20 for 57 at 35% when you come into the game. As you dig a little deeper into that, it might be a little misleading as it comes into it. And now on fourth down, when they go for it after the, play, after the plays tonight and getting the first downs, they are now 15 for 20 on fourth down. And I guess we're going to have a media timeout here. We'll take it. 60 seconds and then back for more. And the conclusion of the first quarter, it's Liberty Football here on KINA. indoor football on KINA. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 19 to 9 is our score. 10 point lead by the Omaha Beef. And for us, this has been typical for the Liberty over the last few home games. Well, they just got out of the blocks a little bit slow. They trail, and then coming back in the second half, they're able to turn it up a little bit on defense and make some adjustments in the locker room at halftime. But you don't want to rust on that being your your habits and, and your game plan. You get let Omaha get too far out in front of you. Some adjustments just won't help, and you want to make sure you're still within striking distance when you go to the locker room. Yeah, even we've seen the points that Omaha's put up throughout the year, and, you know, Salina seems to have been, as much as you don't want to say it, relying on their second-half defense to come back. But like you said, you can't, you can't let Omaha get stretched out here. We saw last week in the second half where Sioux City got up by 15 and Salina was able to come back. You know, being 10 right now but still in the first quarter, you've got to see if you see your offense can put something together here to help your defense out. You can say what you want about Omaha's schedule, but one glaring fact for me that when you look at their statistics throughout the season, defensively, they have only given up on average of 37 points a game. To me, that is just super, super impressive. That defense is very, very good, as we have seen already here tonight. Here's the kick. It'll be Daniel McKinney at the 10. He'll angle up from the 15 to the 20. Stumbled down a little bit. Must have stayed on his feet as he will get three more yards and bring it out to the 23-yard line. Four seconds left to play in the first quarter. And Andrew Jackson, the Liberty offense, will come out and play one more play, probably, unless they're going to start this clock, and they will. That'll take us to the end of one. That's the end of the first quarter. Nine, Omaha coming in from the north, playing Salina. Here in Salina's last home game of the regular season, the Beef lead at 19 to nine at the end of one here on KINA. Thinking about the most special day. quarter I think pretty much what we expected 19 to 9 Omaha leading this is a very intense very physical game thus far 
Andrew Jackson starts with Tracy Brooks at the right hip. They're going to give it to Pargo. Rashad Pargo on the end of round, looking for space, and he has some. 20, 15, 10, 5, stumbling, scoring, touchdown. Rashad Pargo from 27 yards away has just scored a Liberty touchdown. It's the second week in a row. Rashad has a rushing touchdown, and that adds to his totals yet even more. He's second in the league in receiving touchdowns, but this time he gets it done in the running game. Yeah, he was corralled up right here, just surrounded about the 23-yard line of Omaha and just gave one little shimmy to free it up, just enough to freeze the defense to get him up, to run him up the sideline for a touchdown. Biggest play of the night for the Liberty on offense goes to Rashad Pargo. Jimmy Allen on for the extra point. We will actually have Jimmy at halftime, part of our Precision Electric player profile, a Michigan native. One of our favorites on this team. I mean, they're all our favorites, but Jimmy always up for a conversation. And this football goes off the right upright, bounces out no good. And the Liberty leave that extra point on the field. 19-15 as we start second quarter action with Rashad Pargo. Brian, we'll go down to you. Yeah, this is probably bad timing after that missed PAT, but I promise Jimmy, you know, he's got a lot of friends and family that follow his career. And I promise him I'd give a big shout out to Hannah and Karen. They're up in Holly, Michigan. Everybody at the Springfield Inn Bar, they're watching the game tonight. Thanks for your support. Jimmy said you guys would be a little bit surprised that we called you out on the air tonight. Well, at least we know we have a couple listeners, don't we? Welcome viewers. in. <laughs> <laughs> that doubled our output from last week. <laughs> it's their loss. And people that aren't related to the three of us. Right, exactly. Well, believe me, my relatives want yeah. nothing to do with me. My wife hears me enough at home. <laughs> 19 to 15, our score after that end of round from Rashad Pargo. That is the second rushing touchdown of the year. We talked about it a lot last week, Russ. Rashad, just one of those guys. I mean, you got to get the football in his hands. We compared him a little bit to what um, Sioux City does with Fred Bruno. Yeah, they're very similar. You know, their running styles are different. As Fred Bruno can more, more run downhill and, and, and take the contact and just go. And Rashad being... You know, kind of shifty and just so quick on his feet that he gets up to top speed so quick that when one guy misses, he's up 10 to 15 yards before somebody can catch him. And that run right there was a prime example. We thought he was going to be just settling for a five-yard gain, and then, oh, no, here we go. He's bouncing around there in the crowd and has his offensive lineman and a couple of receivers helping him out, and then all of a sudden he's dragging a couple of defenders into the end zone with him, and it's 19-15 now. Omaha with a four-point lead. They're set to get the football back here from... Jimmy Allen's right leg. Back deep for Omaha is Antonio Bray. This ball's going to bounce. Bray will take it at the two. Little hesitation. Now angles left to the 5, 10, 15, 20. Out free to the 25 and crossing midfield where he's drugged down from behind by Travis Taylor. Taylor might have saved a touchdown on that play. Ended up with the football, but the official said Bray was down as he crossed midfield into Liberty territory. And the football is going to rest right on the line of the 20-yard line. Yeah, and you go back to that kick by Jimmy Allen. Really a, a really solid kick as it took one bounce and then a couple squibs and then bounced up high over the second man to the to the last return guy. And, you know, just the coverage kind of break down there for him to get through there and get up to the 20-yard line of Salina. Javier Dyer will play the defensive tackle this time for the Liberty. Latimer on his left, Taylor on the right. A couple of late additions here for the Liberty defense, and I believe... Ferran O'Neill might have burned a timeout here as he glares over at his bench, wanting to know what the delay was and these guys getting onto the field. And it wasn't just one of them. There were several of them who were late getting on. So the Liberty will have to burn their first timeout of the half. They will have two timeouts remaining. Also, Omaha took an early timeout in their first quarter of play. So they will have two timeouts remaining as we go down the stretch here towards the intermission. That Jimmy Allen interview, by the way, will come up at halftime on our Precision Electric player profile. Next week, and for the next three weeks, we'll be on the road. Long road travels ahead for Salina. It's going to Wichita next Sunday, then next to week's Omaha. Not bad. Next it's week's not bad. not bad. That's just a little short drive. But something but, very important there, you want to make sure you put on your planner and in your cell phones, that's a Sunday game. Big River, Sunday game. Yeah, Riverfest, I assume, probably affecting that schedule. We did the same thing last year, so that will be a 4 o'clock kick at Interest Bank Arena for the Salina Liberty and Wichita next Sunday. Testing, Speaking testing. Of Wichita, they're in Sioux City at Tyson Events Center tonight. Sioux City off to an early lead as they're in the first quarter of that one, 7-0 over Wichita. 
All set, ready to go now. I assume everybody's on the field on their respective sides. Omaha with three wide receivers on the right-hand side. Fake pitch out for the run. They find a receiver, and it is caught up against the wall in the ever-soft hands of Kane Farquharson. Farquharson's second catch of the day. He caught that first touchdown of the game. Yeah, just an excellent route ran there by Farquharson. Just kind of ran the defender off and just planted and. You know, right about the 13, 12, 13 yard line, it just stood there as the defender was still seven yards away. Gain of eight on that play will bring up second down and two. That ball caught right in front of Isaiah Barfield. Isaiah working the left hand side. Kendrick Harper on the right hand side. Here's Bernard, back to pass. Has to get rid of Javier Dyer, and he just does. Throws it out there, and it's incomplete. It's on the turf. Coach Ron O'Neill losing his mind over there on that far side. And Brian, we'll always go to field level for you on these plays. There's no way that ball was complete, was there? It, it was close. To me, it looked like it, the point of the ball might have been on the ground when he picked it up. But unfortunately, that's going to be one of those, I don't care what angle you're going to have, it would probably be an inconclusive right. situation because you're just going to have to go with the call on the field. Yeah, and you go back to... When, you know, we see the whole Tom Brady rule effect in the NFL, he was, his forward progress was stopped way before that throw. Bernard back to throw again, throws it over to the side. I hope throwing that one away. That one ended up in the second row of the elevated stands over in the corner. Yeah, Javier Dyer was ripping Derek Bernard down. Kudos to Derek to get rid of that football and find somebody that even had a chance of catching it. But that pass called complete and advanced down to the five yard line where it is now second down and goal from the five. 12.33 left to go here in the second quarter. 15 to 19, Omaha leading by four and knocking on the door again, trying to add some additional points here. Phillips on the right hip of Bernard. Three receivers also on the right hand side. Bernard dancing, has to shake off a defender, loses the football, it's loose. His offensive lineman recovers it. There's a flag on the play. And a recovery by Omaha that time, right into the lap of Warren Dent. Bernardo was trying to throw that football, and he was sandwiched between a couple of Liberty defenders, but we do have a flag on the play. There is no flag on the play. And they're going to consider a fumble. No foul on the play. Brian. Yeah, I think Third down. At first, it was going to be as if it was a pass and, and potentially an ineligible receiver that might have got that ball. But then they say no flag. They considered it a fumble as his arm was in motion, but the ball was actually knocked loose. So, got to take a little bit of a loss. Third down. One thing I'm noticing here, Devin, is the front three for Salinas seem to be in this last two drives getting more and more pressure, flushing Derek Bernard out of the pocket. I was just going to say that. They've turned up the volume a little bit here in these last two drives. See what Bernard can do here. It's third down and now pushed back to the 14-yard line. In the pocket, calmly to his receiver, and another one dropped. This is the second pass dropped by Jaden Swinson. He dropped a touchdown on the last drive for Omaha. They ended up scoring anyway, and he drops another one in the end zone or right at the goal line here for the beef. So now Omaha exchanging some personnel. They will put the field goal team on the field, and they will bring on Zeke Arillo. Arillo coming on on the season for field goals. He is 6 of 17. And he will try to make this a 7-point Omaha lead. Placement will be put down by Derek Bernard. It's a 29-yard attempt. And the kick is up, and it's good. Travis Taylor came in there, nearly got a piece of it, but didn't quite Media complete as Omaha comes away with a field goal. 22 to 15 now our score. An immediate timeout here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. 10.59 left to go. Second quarter, 22 to 15. Omaha leads it by seven on KINA. When termites strike you.
I am confident you will choose us for your next vehicle. Our best price guarantee and high trading values, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. Stop in and see us at 651 South Ohio or visit us on the web 24 hours a day at BennettBuellGMC.com. A1 Plumbing Services, a proud supporter of the Salina Liberty football team. A1 Plumbing makes your life easy. Competitive rates and quick response times, plus all work, including labor and parts, are guaranteed. A1 Plumbing is open to service 24 hours a day. New construction and remodeling are just the beginning of the many services master plumber Chris Bogan and his team perform. Save time and money with sewer camera service. Don't wait. Call A1 Plumbing, 827-4888. That's 827-4888. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Big Sam Pretty is our producer and engineer for tonight's contest. Want to welcome you, all of you that may be listening or viewing. KINA and Salina, 910 AM, 107.5 FM on SalinaPost.com. And also on the Pluto TV network for Champions Indoor Football. Welcome in. It's Tony's Pizza Event Center, game number nine for the Salina Liberty as they are playing their last home game of the regular season here against the Omaha Beef. First meeting of the season between the Beef and the Liberty. And right now Omaha is set to kick it away as they lead by seven. And this ball goes horribly out of bounds. And it will be selected. The ball will be placed at the 25-yard line, first strike. and ten. Yeah, I mean, great field position now for Salina where the ball will be spotted at midfield. You know, you have one play with Rashad Fargo on a little jet sweep around. You know, the running game seems to be the way to go tonight for Salina as most of their yards have come off the run game. But you'd like to see, you, you still can't take out throwing the ball to Rashad Pargo, you know, as nearly half of his catches are for touchdowns this year. One of the guys that we've really bragged on a lot lately has been Tyler Jones, who's made an impression on this team. He's second on the team in receiving even though he spent a limited time here behind Rashad Fargo, but he is inactive tonight with the emergence of Daniel McKinney. Here's a screen play out to the left. It will go to Matthew Craig, and Craig will get two, maybe three yards, and then be brought down by a legion of Omaha tacklers. Now Matthew Craig being probably the largest receiver that Salina has. You know, the program has him listed at about 6'5", but I, I still don't believe it as he it seems taller when you get down there and talk to him, a real nice young man. and He's beastly. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a big guy. And he's one guy I would like to see him try to get the ball to deep down the field with his length that he has. Craig, McKinney, Pargo all on the right-hand side. Jackson looking that way. Now he's going to air it out to the end zone. A leaping attempt at a catch by Daniel McKinney, but just over the gloves and his fingertips here in the corner of the end zone. Brian, that was right in front of you. McKinney making the effort, just unable to get up off the ground and snag that one in. Yeah, he made the effort, just kind of ran out of space there in that uh, short corner. But I tell you what, the fans sitting right behind there. I think that's the third football that they've been able to corral tonight, so probably the best seats in the house. Salina coming back now, third down and seven. It'll be an empty backfield as all four skill players on the right-hand side, Jackson. In the middle, has Pargo inside the 10. Pargo dancing, has that football. Now he's going to retract back to the 12. They're going to say forward progress inside the 10. Doesn't matter. It's still a first down as Rashad Pargo makes his first catch of the game. Already has a rushing touchdown. And that right there to me is one of the impressive things. Andrew Jackson absolutely stepped through that football and ripped it down the middle of the field. And you see it hit Pargo's hands like it was just landing in pillows. Yeah, and you know, we talk about Jackson. He's so calm and poised in the pocket, you know, when he slides forward. And I beat it to death. The middle of them defenses in the whole league seem to be wide open. This time they're going to load it up on the left-hand side. Counter back to the weak side, Brooks. That's been a good play for Salina tonight. Tracy's going to take it to the six-yard line, where it'll be second down and goal from there. 8.38 left to go. Here in the second quarter, Salina trying to draw back even with Omaha after the Beef have built a seven-point lead. Remember, Omaha led by 10 just a few moments ago. It was 19 to 9. Again, Pargo, Craig, McKinney all going to the left. Now this time Craig's going to come in and line up in the slot as a tight end type of player. Bubble screen out. A flag's going to fly. Craig takes it. He's in the end zone. And the flag over here on the near side. We'll have to address that to see where that's going to hang out.
Illegal defense, number five. Lined up five yards inside the belt. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Touchdown of the season. And he has just drawn the Salina Liberty back within one. We've seen them throw that bubble screen a lot to Matthew Craig over the last two games, guys, including this one here. He won a couple of games where he was inactive. And then now he's back, and it seems like they have a different game plan for him. Yeah, it seemed early they wanted to target him down the field, but, you know, being 6'5 and 240, you know, with seven yards to go, it's kind of just get it to him. And, you know, his wingspan is about seven foot, Coach said, to just reach the ball out. Extra point to try to tie it up. Jimmy Allen up and good, and we're all even. After about 22 clock minutes, we're all even at 22 as that one goes through from Jimmy Allen. And Brian, one of the guys that I want to talk about that he had a huge game last week, and actually over the past three games, we talked to Ron O'Neill about him in pregame, but he's been absent so far in this contest. Is Ed Smith? Yeah, Ed, Ed has been out there. It's just I don't, they haven't gone his direction. And notice the first couple of possessions, he, he was running some routes, but I think they're looking at trying to get McKinney involved. And then with Craig coming along, but the things that Fargo does, it's just kind of where does he fall in that order? So, as we see and what we talk about a lot, Ferran O'Neill always moving pieces, always trying to get better, always trying to finish strong and have the best team that you can possibly have in the stretch. And I think it's safe to say this is the stretch. I mean, this is equivalent to a playoff game here tonight. As we go through now, just three weeks left after, or three games, I should say, left after this one for the Liberty, and they're all on the road. I think you got to look at the rest of the season as the playoffs. You know, this is your last game in Salina. Then you, you know, you go to Wichita, who may be down, but you can never take any games for granted in the CIF because we saw things flip-flop so often. And then you go to Omaha and then to Duke City. So just a big stretch, and it all started – we can still go back to what started last week with Sioux City to get the sweep to keep that kind of buffer in there. And now the Omaha leading the Northern Division. Just a huge game here. I like it. The games mean stuff. I wouldn't say it's the last game of the year, Devin. You can't hold nothing back. But, <laughs> you know, no, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, I like it. This has been a great game so far. It's exactly what we expected. Also a big game in the South as Albuquerque and Duke City. And that one kind of loses a little bit of its luster, Russ, just because of the revolution folding up. Now there's a bullet by Jimmy Allen. And it goes right off of one of the front line guys for Omaha and then also recovered. That was a really, really good play by Robert Cuba, one of the defensive linemen who was able to cover that up. And Omaha's going to come out now and take it over in Salina territory at the 19-yard line. Duke City and Amarillo tied up 7-7 apiece. But that loses a little bit of its luster when you have expansion Oklahoma. They're not going to push. They're they're sitting right now 0-7. They do have a four-foot win against the Revolution. But when you have the Revolution in that mix, it was kind of a three-way dance. Like what we have in the north with Salina, Omaha, and Sioux City. Amarillo and Duke City, everybody knows they're going to make the playoffs. Yeah, you know, they're, they're the solid teams in the south. They have been for the last couple years. So, you know, it all comes down to going back to where we are here right now. Derek Bernard, a little miscommunication in the backfield, but somehow he gets it into the belly that time of Calvin Phillips. And Phillips takes that football for a positive game. Boy, that could have been a disaster for Omaha, but somehow they get it forward for about five yards, and that'll bring up second down and five. Yeah, him and Javon Bell made a collision there, and he about made the tackle about three yards deep in the end zone, but somehow the ball got through and still got a positive play out of it. Omaha. Putting together some methodical drives here. They really haven't had a big, huge play. Salina has had a couple of those plays. I think the biggest Omaha play so far of the game was the run on the first drive by quarterback Derek Bernard. Here's a lot of misdirection again. A one-on-one -on -one play out in the flat, and it's Travis Taylor who dropped out into coverage to take the receiver, Javon Bell. And that was a good mano-a-mano -mano matchup. Javon Bell gets about three yards. But it was a very physical one-on-one -on -one battle, Brian. Yeah, it looked like uh, Salina wanted to go old-school NFL blitz on that takedown. Oh, nice. Good reference. I like that. Big oh. and deep. Big and deep. Real deep. Third and two. Empty backfield. Bernard's done most of this by himself. And a pass slapped out of bounds. Or slapped down, excuse me. And Dana Harris goes to Kimbe Matumbo. 
on Derek Bernard and says, not in my house. Yeah. That's a couple of passes now by Derek Bernard that we've seen slapped down by this front for the Liberty. And they'll four at base, fourth down once again. Yeah, and it appears they're going to keep Derek Bernard on the field. So big fourth down here. You see if Latimer and uh, Taylor up front, you know what they call here, if Naquan comes on a blitz or not. But nonetheless, a big fourth down here. Detroit Matthews will come up. He'll meet one of the receivers at the line of scrimmage. Bernard back to throw. Incomplete. Bernard threw it right in the middle of the field, and I'm not sure who his intended target was on that play, but a couple of the receivers turning around now for Omaha trooping at Derek Bernard as if to ask what went wrong there, and Bernard really barely even had that ball, Brian, in his hands before he threw it. Yeah, I think he was trying to say that there was some holding on his receiver, but I think it was just good downfield, no contact, so I think it was a good call by the official. Bernard just basically threw the ball down at the feet of the receiver. Big stop by Salina. Now it's an opportunity to come get points on the board on this drive. Then you're not chasing any longer. You've got control now from the standpoint of making Omaha match what you're trying to do. Well, and I feel like we beat this horse to death a little bit, but you have to because it's so important. Salina will get the ball to start second half. 5.44 left to go, still a lot of time here. Andrew Jackson, fake pitch out, looking downfield, lets one go, wide open receiver, it's McKinney at the 20, 25 and the other 20, and then brought down as his ankles flipped up in the air by the defensive back for Omaha. Tyrell Green comes in, the former Liberty player, taking Daniel McKinney down at the 19, and welcome to the football club, Daniel McKinney. First down, Liberty inside Omaha's side of the field at the 19. Excellent strike by Jackson to McKinney down the field. I don't want to take anything away from Daniel McKinney in the game he's having, but it just seems to be when he's trying to make break tackles that that football gets swung way out there with one arm and not protecting it. Loaded up on the left-hand side. They will run Tracy Brooks to that side. It's going to be a walk-in touchdown, maybe, and brought down inside the five. Holy cow. Give all the credit in the world to Tyrell Green again. Tyrell came over, and he was the only one that could get Tracy Brooks, and he did. You remember Tyrell when he was with the Liberty last year, hurt his knee very early in the season, and he was on the shelf for quite some time, but when he came back and started to play, that was really the difference in 2018 of this Liberty defense. I know we have a lot of respect for Tyrell Green. Last two plays shows why. Yeah, just an outstanding defensive back as we, we called it a walk-in touchdown, and then, you know, he comes out of, Green nowhere, came out of nowhere. Nowhere, yeah. nowhere to be found. 4.15 left to go. First down and goal now at the two-yard line for the Liberty. Tracy Brooks, right hit. Pitch out to short pitch. Tracy now has to get away from some defenders. He's trying to slip one tackle, trying to get past another tackle, and he is going to make it just a one-yard loss. It could have been much worse than that as Omaha swarming to the football that time. Andrew Jackson even got in there and tried to peel a block for Tracy Brooks, but there was just too many of them as they came in. And one of the big intimidating figures in this game is Kwame Bell, the defensive lineman. He is a huge guy. One of those guys that's very athletic, along with his size, Brian. Big and quick. That time the defense made a good job of swinging it over. But then when Brooks made that cutback, they were equal up to the challenge. Tracy Brooks on the right-hand side again. All the receivers on that side. Jackson back to pass. Andrew looking. He'll step up in the pocket. Still has some time. Going to throw it to the back. Caught for a touchdown. Climbing the ladder for the Liberty. Up there in the middle of nowhere. You guessed it. Rashad Pargo. His second touchdown of the game. This is his first one receiving. And he has a league high. Second in the league. 16 touchdowns on the season. Half of the balls he catches. There for six points. Yeah. Not only was that a great catch by Fargo, but he did it going up into the air against both Tyrell Green and Trey Dudley. They were equal as far as going up. Fargo just was able to get up just a little bit further to bring that down. Jimmy Allen on for the extra point. I'll give you Fargo's numbers on the year. And you can see what I'm talking about after this PAT by Jimmy Allen. Kelvin McCoy, a beautiful snap back to Tracy Brooks. Kick is up, and it is good. And now a swing here for the Liberty. They trailed by 10, and now they're up by 7 with 3.23 left to go in the first quarter. So far in this game, Rashad Pargo has two catches. He also has a receiving touchdown as of now. On the season, his stats look like this. 35 receptions, 16 touchdowns, Brian. Almost half the balls he catches are for touchdowns. That's, that's production. He's a big-time player. You know, when, when you 
when you talk about those crucial plays, I don't think it's out of the out of the realm for all three of us. The first name we really think of is Rashad Pargo. And it's proven. It's exactly why. He makes the big plays at the right time. What it was it the, in the replacements? Uh, big time play, big time players want the ball for big time plays, something along that line. I think that's what Pargo does. He's got the confidence in himself. There you quote Dickie V with a PTP right there, a prime time player. And there you know, go. Rashad Pargo just like you said, Brian, climbing the ladder, just an unbelievable catch in the back of the end zone. You know, you can go back to the catch that Sioux City had towards the end of the game last week, you know, with that one-handed miraculous catch he had. That one may not rank as high of difficulty as that, but nonetheless, just as impressive. Brian, we were looking down on that play. You were looking up at that play as you're sitting almost directly underneath the, the crossbar of the goalpost. It looked like, from our perspective, that Rashad Pargo was up at the crossbar to bring that ball down. I mean, and that's 10 feet in the air. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty close. He did a great job. And one thing that probably goes unnoticed, some of his teammates were behind there, kind of helping catching him just in case he went backwards. I think that helped him get up a little bit uh, higher to bring it down. Here's Jimmy Allen's kick. It's a bullet. It's going to be fielded at the 14-yard line. Now the return is on for Chris Perry. Perry makes it just short of the midfield stripe as he was probably thinking the toughest part of that play was going to be to catch that football as it was just coming at him with a lot of vapor trail behind it from Jimmy Allen. And now Omaha will take over here with 3.15 left to go in the second quarter. Liberty has swung the gate here. They were down by 10. Now they're up by 7, 29 to 22. Yeah, you know you talk about 3.15 left to go here in the second half and Salina if they can get a defensive stop here and maybe work a little clock as the clock continues to run to get that two for one as we talk about. We don't. We haven't talked about Salina getting a two for one very much because they haven't won very many coin tosses right. this year. Derry Bernard standing at his own 20 yard line. Ball sitting at the midfield stripe. End around run and Jake Latimer says, I don't think so, it ain't gonna happen right now. They got into the hands of Calvin Phillips and he took the football and then looked up at the former Iowa State Cyclone, and that's about as far as he made it. Jake Latimer was there, he was assignment sound, he stayed in his lane and made the play. Yeah, Jake Latimer just come up out of his stance, just ready to move, not really rushing the passer, not really dropping back into coverage, just kind of hanging out, you know, guarding the edge, and just was met right there in a great open field tackle. That loss will bring up now a second down and 11. Crossing again in the backfield, two receivers, and a flag's going to fly. I believe one of the Omaha receivers was offsides. They're going to call procedure on that receiver. Ball start. Phillips. Number zero, offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Latimer on that last play. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Jake Latimer is the best defensive player in the league, guys, because I don't think he is. But is there anybody more valuable to his defense than Jake Latimer? and just valuable to his team. We see what he does on special teams night in and night out. Yeah, he's such a leader on this Salina, deep, not only the defense, but the special teams, the offense. You know, I think he. we see him come out during offensive timeouts and kind of pump the guys up, so he's just a natural leader out there. Second down and 16 now. Derek Bernard, empty backfield, four wide receivers. Latimer gets through, he's being chased. Now Taylor crawling to Bernard. Bernard gets rid of it, and he's going to complete the pass. And then a shoestring tackle that's going to be very close to the first down. The referees are going to say move the chains as Bernard was able to find Javon Bell. Boy, don't these two have a connection. Bell that time slipped out of the first tackle and then got caught from behind a little bit by the heels, and he was able to lunge towards the sticks. It was close enough for the officials to call first down, and now Omaha goes from being in a hole to being in business, first and 10 at the Salina 15. And you got the front three guys flushing, flushing Derek Bernard out of the pocket every, uh, just about every pass play. See if the secondary can come up with something here. Pistol formation. They hand it off to Calvin Phillips right up the gut. He's going to gain three, and that will take us to the 60-second warning. One minute left to go in the first half. 29-22, Liberty lead it by seven. Omaha, though, knocking on the door with 60 seconds left to go in the half. You're listening to it right here on KINA. 60-second timeout. One-minute timing rules are now in effect. Media, timeout. Please reset the game clock to one minute.
Carolina. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 29 to 22 is our score. It is the Salina Liberty leading the Omaha Beef by seven. Scores from around the CIF. Amarillo now has taken a lead in Albuquerque. They lead the Gladiators 14 to seven. That game still early on in the second quarter. Also, the North Texas Savages. Again, remember they're the Band-Aid team for people playing home games in place of the Texas Revolution who folded up in Oklahoma at home in Enid tonight playing against the Savages, and they are up 14 to nothing in that game midway through the first. And then we take a look into North, North Division in Iowa where the Sioux City Bandits are playing Wichita Force, and that is 14 to 7, Sioux City. And boy, I just we go back to Sioux City again talking about them. And I, I mean, if you're these two teams on this field right now at Tony's Pizza Event Center, I think you're really, really big Wichita Force fans right now. You want to hang another loss on the Bandits. Yeah, you have to because... Like you said, in the Sioux City knocking Salina out of the playoffs last year. Sioux City is a team that's kind of, you know, kind of different to watch. You know, they run the ball hard. They don't they don't put up a ton of points. They play good defense. They run downhill. So, and they're never out of football games. You can never count Sioux City out. Pistol formation once again for Omaha behind Derek Bernard this time is Antonio Bray. Bernard back to pass over the middle, and it's going to be deflected and almost picked off. What a diving Diving save that time for Salina, coming up, making the play. He almost picked it off, but he definitely knocked the ball out of the air. Was Frankie Solomon Jr. Just his second game as a Salina Liberty player, and he has already made an impact. I asked Ron O'Neill before the game, I said, how'd Frankie play in your mind? He said, you know what? He goes, there was a couple plays that he knocked the ball out of the air that people saw. He said, there were 13 plays that nobody saw that I did. And he, he was just glowing about Frankie Solomon. Third down and seven now for the beat. Bernard back to pass. Here comes the heat. Travis Taylor's going to drop him. Derek Bernard goes down at the 19-yard line as Travis Taylor came from behind. Derek Bernard never saw him, and it's a blindside hit by Taylor. Yeah, you talk about Travis Taylor in that front three and last Timeout. And up the middle, Salina. They're, they're second of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Able to get there to corral Derek Bernard and not to get him, not to let him get outside the pocket and get the sack, which brings up a crucial fourth down here with coach Heron O'Neill calling a timeout to stop the clock to try to get the football back with some time left to get his offense back on the field. Zeke Aurelo on the field for the Omaha Beef. His kicking tonight, especially on extra points, has been a bit of an adventure, but he is one on one on field goal attempts. This one will come from midfield. It's a 33 yard attempt. Placement down by Bernard. He double tapped the football on the turf and Aurelo is going to put it through. Aurelo also ended up on the seat of his pants. That's Jake Latimer came streaming through, but now the timeout by Coach Ron O'Neill will save some time here for the Liberty. Guys, there is still 43 seconds left to play here in this half. Salina has a timeout remaining, and Brian, as we know, 60-second timing rules now will go into effect on this last 43 seconds for the Liberty. Tell us about that. Yeah, you just have to make forward progress on each play you can give yourself up out of bounds that will stop the clock so it's one of those things you know I, I think Salina is going to use with one timeout they'll use the entire field here on these first couple possessions and see you know keep in mind also Salina's really had some pretty good field position off these kickoffs the kicker has, has put the ball out of out of bounds uh, you know one time and then some good returns so it won't be uh, out of the question to have, you know, maybe 25, 30 yards to go here in this last uh, 40 seconds or so. That was a 33-yard field goal there by Omaha. Zeke Arillo, he put it right through, and he has made this a four-point game. And again, now waiting with bated breath to see what the Liberty do here on offense. But they've had some big plays tonight. They had a big reception by Daniel McKinney. They had a big run for a touchdown by Rashad Pargo. They also had... That sky catch in the back of the end zone by Pargo on that last touchdown. 29-25 oh. is our score with 43 seconds left. A lot of Pargo thrown in there. You don't want to yeah. go, go away from him here with 40 seconds left to go in the half. No, sir. Zeke Arillo ready to kick this one away. It's going to bounce short. Isaiah Barfield fighting with the ball or fighting for the ball with Daniel McKinney. Finally goes back to the five to bring it down. And Barfield's going to make it back to the 15. 
Isaiah tried to get that ball in his hands, and then Daniel McKinney came up. Looked like he might have needed some help, and then the two just kind of went back and forth. Four hands, one, one football, and it didn't really work out too well. But Salina will come out now, and they will put their offense on the field with 35 seconds left to go and one timeout. Even one timeout left. You can still work the whole field as we saw early in the first quarter where the middle of the field has come wide open when they streak two receivers down the side of the wall. So not out of the question to still throw it down the middle of the field. Line of scrimmage to start this drive will be the 14-yard line. Very least here, I think you want to give Jimmy Allen a shot to equalize that field goal that Omaha just put on the board. Calvin McCoy grabs that football. The left-handed center. We'll snap it back to Andrew Jackson, who has an empty backfield, a bunch of wide receivers. Jackson steps up, now past the line of scrimmage. He's going to come to the wall and hold the football over the top, and that will stop the clock after a minimal three-yard gain. There to meet him, the leading tackler for the Omaha Beef, it's Desmond Reed. Six seconds off the clock, leaves 29. Saw a little crisscross there by Tracy Brooks and Rashad Pargo about the 15-yard line of Salina. Kind of confused Omaha. But Derek, or Derek Bernard, Andrew Jackson had already been flushed up and out of the pocket and already decided to tuck the ball and run. Second down and seven, line of scrimmage down at the 17-yard line. Tracy Brooks hanging out in the backfield. Now he's going to leave, be the solo on the right-hand side. Jackson looking that way. Now he's going to dump it off short. Looks like it's going to be Pargo at the 20, and Pargo's going to be tackled in the middle of the field. Doesn't look like he was able to stop the clock there. And now Salina will use their last time out with 16 seconds left to play in the half. See if they put about four or five more seconds back on the clock. Salina will take their third and final time out of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Please reset the game clock to 22 seconds. 22 seconds. Six seconds. You looked at me funny when I said they were going to put time back on the clock like I didn't know what I was talking about. Brian, right now you're looking at a third down and four. You also want to leave a chance maybe for Jimmy Allen if you can't get a touchdown to get a, next, a field goal opportunity here. What's your strategy when no timeouts remaining? You obviously have to work the sides. Yeah, I think you're going to have to work the sides. You know, if you come in the middle of the field, the one thing that will save you is that the clock will stop in order for them to get the chains moved. So we could only hope that... Uh, you know, our chain crew might take a little bit extra time, kind of fumble around a little bit. Um, that would allow, a, you know, potentially to get to some transition or at least get it to where you're going to down the ball. First, you got to pick up this first down and move the chains a little bit. As we said, preferably along the wall from the 20 yard line. Snap back to Jackson, looking down the field. He's going to go to the side. Tracy Brooks has to slip a tackle. He cannot. And that's going to keep the clock moving here. Clock's going to continue to move. Ron O'Neill screaming at his offense to spike the ball and stop the clock. Clock yeah. down to nine. It'll be a fourth down anyway. You can't stop the. You can't spike the ball because you have fourth down. You don't want to spike the ball here. Now Andrew Jackson's going to run a play. One second. Here's the snap. All or nothing. Jackson airs it out towards the end zone. Has a receiver and it's knocked out. Just hit the last second. Matthew Craig, the big that's receiver, the end of the half. The target. Half time. Talk about the adjustments there, though, Russ. As they were coming to the line of scrimmage. Coach Ron O'Neill, his knee-jerk reaction was telling his quarterback to stop the clock and spike the ball. Then he realized it was fourth down. They didn't have that liberty to do that because then Omaha would have came out and had a field goal opportunity with a few seconds left. And Coach O'Neill made that change, communicated it to his team, and they were able to take a shot there and still take a four-point lead into the locker room at halftime. Yeah, you know, they're talking about still going up into halftime, but Coach O'Neill making... The call there to just, you know, you can't spike it, it's fourth down, and what better guy to throw it to to give a chance to catch the ball than Matthew Craig in his big 6'5 frame with a 7-foot wingspan, and he still almost came down with a catch. Coach O'Neill already in the locker room. He had about a 25-yard head start on Brian, so I will not blame it on you this time, Brian, that he had that yardage to start on you. But what we will do, though, when we come back after the break, we will have our precision electric player profile and it's kicker Jimmy Allen right now, his team up at half, 29-25 over the Omaha Beef. 
When we come back, Brian and Jimmy Allen, it's halftime. Four-point lead for the Liberty here at the break on KINA. Ava, why are you sitting in Mom's car? Because, Noah, I'm hungry. And every Monday we go to Rib Crib, where kids 12 and under eat free all day. Ava, Mom and Dad love their menu, and I like the ribs. Ava, they get my fingers gooey. <laughs> Ava, what, Noah? I like Mondays at Rib Crib, too. But today's Saturday. You're just a couple of days away. Two free kids' entrees with each adult entree purchase all day Mondays at Rib Crib in Salina on South 9th in front of Lowe's. School cools out. Summertime's here, and it's never too early to plan for next fall, especially at Salina Used Cars, where we have so many great school cars and rides for that summer job. Vehicles starting at $2,900 and over a dozen vehicles for under $9,900. Payments starting at $99 and 100% credit approval. Qualifications apply. Prices plus tax. See dealer for details. Visit both of our locations on the corner of Crawford and Ohio or visit us online. 24-7 at SalinaUsedCars.com. PRP, or platelet-rich plasma injection therapy, has received quite a bit of attention since it's used by many professional athletes. Professional football players like Peyton Manning and Des Bryant have used PRP therapy for sports injuries and to avoid surgery. But you don't have to be a world-class athlete with millions of dollars for this cutting-edge therapy. PRP is available to you in the Salina Pain Clinic. Call the doctors for a consultation and see if this treatment is right for you. See them at 200 South 5th in the Salina Surgical Arts Center. Are you sprucing up your home this spring? Think about your garage door. In most cases, your garage door is 50% of your home's front facade and curb appeal. It's also your home's smile, if you will. This month, when you buy a new garage door from Overhead Door Company, you will get a 50% discount on all decorative hardware. Take a look at your garage door now. Then make that call to Overhead Door Company of North Central Kansas in Salina and McPherson. Or visit them on the web at odcnck.com. The name is JJ Lawn Care, but don't let the name fool you. It's not just lawns they care about, it's their customers. JJ Lawn Care is a locally owned business that works with people in and around Salina on more than just lawns. The spring season is here, and now's the time to act for a healthy, lush lawn. Call now for a free estimate on a four or six step program. Let JJ Lawn Care come to the rescue for your fescue. Mm -hmm. Give them a call today, 820 7728. JJ Lawn Care, caring for more than just your lawn. The spring season is here, and paintball fun is waiting for you at Elite Sports. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, five miles south of Salina, is open for the season. Get the group together and visit Elite Sports on Saturdays and Sundays during the spring and check out their new online booking system. Elite Sports features new low-impact paintballs for beginners or little ones, so everyone can have more fun. Visit them online at salinapaintballcomplex.com. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, open and waiting for you this weekend. When you hire street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street plumbing, heating, and electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. This is the Liberty Halftime Report. Coming up, a first half recap, stats, interviews, and a look at other CIF games. Now let's head back to the arena for Liberty Halftime on KINA. KINA. Welcome back to the Tony's Pizza Events Center Halftime of the Liberty as they host the Omaha Beef. And uh, history is being made right now. The first time we have ever had a player on twice within the season it's our pleasure to have with us here at halftime jimmy allen we talked to jimmy during the exhibition game and that was kind of unique because it was actually during the course of the game where he kind of got you over there i kind of felt big time on that one i don't know about you but uh chance to get to know jimmy a little bit better kind of refresh everybody's uh memory on the guy that kicks the ball all over the place here for the liberty jimmy welcome back and uh just refresh us. You're a Michigan guy. Yes, sir. Born and raised a uh, small little farm town just outside Flint. Okay. So. Um, started the craft uh, in high school. Now, were you a soccer player also, or was it just strictly football? Yeah, growing I grew up? up thoroughly soccer. My dad played uh, high-level professional soccer, so that was the first thing. And uh, 
youth football practice, about second grade, they say, who can kick? So I, I think I can do that. And ever since then, that's all I know. So Just history from there. History. Yeah, ended up, uh, you know, through high school, then, uh, you know, we had uh, had Dana on with us last week. Uh, you two kind of crossed paths at, uh, at uh, Grand Rapids. Yep, yeah, it's uh, that was the only JUCO or in probably a 400-mile radius, so. A lot of the guys that didn't get the offers they're looking for ended up there, and it just so happened me and him were together there, so it's a good time. So then you end up, uh, you know, you you go through that, and uh, you know now you've kind of uh, you, you're I would probably consider let's let's get your opinion on this. You're one of the veterans in the indoor game when you when you stop and think about it in this area because you, you've been around. I would hope so. After uh, about six seven years, I, I think that constitutes as a veteran. You know, so it's nice. It's uh get to meet a lot of people and i mean obviously playing omaha you got four or five maybe six former teammates right. so that's always fun seeing those guys week in and week out a lot of camaraderie you know i always uh, see you and we we do we talk a lot uh, you know during the course of the games and stuff but uh, i always see you you know kind of getting with the the opponents kickers because you guys you know you're you're really a tight knit group really when you when you stop and think about it because there's there's a lot of guys out there, but not many of you. There's just not many spots to go around. Yeah, and I mean, even growing up, coming in high school, a lot of these guys only trained with the same guys, uh, you know, camps and uh, clinics and whatnot. Because there's only so many guys that really go national with their camps. So we've got that in common. It's kind of like a fraternity when it comes to kickers. How tough was it uh, when you first? Uh, kind of made that uh, that leap to the indoor game did it uh, you know let, let's talk technique wise was it uh, anything different I, I would think the mechanics are going to be the same but uh, you're, you're the spot you focus on did that uh, kind of change a little bit no I typically just try to pick something up behind the upright and I would almost say hope for the best because even you look at the outdoor game some guys are missing two three four feet wide of the middle of the uprights well here I don't have that luxury right. so it's really got to be honed in you had a kind of a, a little bit up and down game last week. Started out a little bit slow, missed a couple PATs, but then right before halftime, you hit, uh, I don't know what they had. Was it a 40, 45, 48? Who, who knows? I, I was maybe adding to it a little bit, but you, you hit a long field goal. I made the comment, I think, uh, if I said that that was going to be the difference. That kind of, I felt, in just looking at you, kind of turned things around a little yeah. bit for you yeah i'll take 48 I'll, okay whatever we'll, we'll you go. Say, it was 48 i'll run with that <laughs> yeah I, it that was a huge kick it kind of it was a big confidence booster but uh on the kickoff after that i actually rolled my ankle trying to make a play on the uh returner and that actually switched a lot of things around i was able to focus more you know having a weak ankle i it's more technique and that's really oddly enough that's what got me through the game okay what's uh Give us an idea of, of what you do during the course of a week because you don't have the ability. You practice down at the Salina Fieldhouse. No uprights, no really ability for you to, to hone on the craft. So is it just on game days when you get out there and then get the opportunity? Or, or let's just kind of walk us through, uh, you know, what your routine looks like. Uh, well, throughout most of the week, I kind of reserve that for healing of uh, just many kicks as you take on Saturdays you need almost a full week just to relax your leg but uh, most of the week is spent um, you know drawing up kickoff kick return because I'd, I'd like to be as big a part of the team as I can be so rather than just kick I'd like to help out with special teams in any way as kind of I can as well so what's uh and we, we look at that when how many different options I don't want to give you you know have you give away any secrets here or anything but uh, um, People probably just look, hey, all he does is goes out and kicks the ball downfield. The guys run down and try to get somebody. There's a heck of a lot more to it when you look at the the direction that your coverage team has to go, you know, and, uh, you know, set up for and the direction that you're going to be kicking the ball high, low. You're going to squib it. You're going to try to get that bounce. There's, It's scientific. Yeah, it, it, it honestly takes per game seven days to figure out how we want to handle their what they're doing on kick return and kick off and the ability to move the ball from wall to wall kind of helps with that a little bit but it's uh it's it's fun i really enjoy it let's talk arenas in this league you see a lot of different arenas that are out there some have a little bit higher walls all the way around some lower some 
homemade, some, you know, professional hockey, the scoreboards, uh, the concert grids. How much of that goes into play also for you? That's a huge thing. I mean, you got some ceilings like, uh, you know, Amarillo's got a lower ceiling. Uh, I've heard Duke City's got a little bit lower ceiling. So, I mean, that, that limits your range of field goal because you need to be able to get the height with the ball if you want to kick from 45, 50. And it's, uh, it's, it's, that's one of the adjustments you got to make week in and week out. And that's, uh, it's another fun part of the game, just seeing different things every week. What lies ahead after football? I, I look at you as a guy that, you know, to me, in my mind, you're, you're a coach. I mean, uh, that, that's just what I see, the, the amount of knowledge that you have, um, you know, the love that I see that you have for the game. Is that something that, uh, you know, might be in your future? What, what, uh, what's that five, ten years from now look like? Well, I actually, I'll be going into my fourth year of coaching at my uh, alma mater high school. So that's uh, something I've slowly started to creep into. And uh, I also have my own kicking academy back home as well. So it's basically a lot of coaching for me and hopefully that's something I can stick around because you know if you love the game why leave it just try to find it in a different capacity so you've got your 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 uh, you know the camps that you run is it a family affair it it is yep it's uh it's called Allen Kicking Academy so that encompasses you know me and my brother my father and uh every every person in the family's got their uh got their input got their say got their way to kind of help so We'd look at, uh, you know, how influential, you know, let's, let's go back to your dad, you know, being the soccer player. Did he kind of help get you, you know, was he, I guess would say your first coach kind of technique wise or who was, uh, you know, those one or two guys that have had the most influence? Oh, yeah. He, I mean, just him loving sport and no one seeing my passion at it or for it at a young age. He did whatever he could to help me technique wise, you know driving 10 hours, flying from Flint to Vegas for camps. I mean, yeah, he, 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 a coach, friend, and a mentor, yeah, he's done all that. So, And then, obviously, with my brother playing, spending time in the NFL and playing at Michigan, you know, that's the best partner you could ask to train for or train with. Who's the best of the three? I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, well, I'm a little biased, so I think I think it's me. But my brother's got a just strongest leg i've ever seen so but can he hit these narrow uprights i've been trying to get him out here i want, I want to see <laughs> this this might be where i so, thrive so is this is the challenge now officially on the table kenny if you're hearing this as soon as you get down to salina it's you and me one-on-one -on -one. there you go I, I we need to be there we this could be like a pay-per-view thing or whatever we'll uh we'll make it happen how, how has salina been been uh been to you you know you you came in late towards the end of last season uh, you know, now here for, for the duration of this season. Stack things up, the other places you played. I mean, as, as far as the city and the fan support and just the, the organization, it's other than the playing in Iowa Barnstormers, this is, this is what most organizations strive to be. You've got season ticket holders that are very avid about being at every game. You've got a smaller town that really supports the city. You've got I mean, you look around all the different sponsors that really look out for the team. I mean, this is this is where I'd like to come play for as long as I want to, or I'm going to play. So. As long as the body holds up. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how that is. Well, I tell you, you, you are you are so you're such a nice guy. You you have the passion for the game, and and you are truly one that uh, you know. I'll kind of speak for the parents in this community that uh, you know. You there's no doubt their kids can look up to you because you carry yourself with such class both on and off the field and uh, uh, you know as a member of the Salina community we really appreciate that and, and you know kudos to the entire team because uh, you know it, it is such a class act uh, um, you know in, in the organization that Coach O'Neill has been able to put together so thank you for that and uh, Dana said otherwise last week he, he's leaning towards Sparty, but you say go blue. So, yeah, go blue. I all guess, the way. guess that's all we can do, yes, all we sir. can say. Uh, Jimmy, thanks so much. We, we appreciate your time, and we'll continue to, uh, you know, be some of your biggest supporters out there. And, uh, you know, keep me honest on that sideline yes, because, sir. Uh, uh, you know, I always kind of look. Uh, look your direction as this game goes on and uh, I've only had to duck out of the way once I I admit I bailed down there but uh, you guys gotta gotta have my back down there <laughs>
That was for you. That's, that's <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy Allen has been our guest here at halftime. It's the Salina Liberty taking on the Omaha Beef. We're at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. We'll be back with second half action right here on 910 KINA. Think about the word precision. Precision represents quality and the fact of being exact and accurate. Isn't that what you want when it comes to electrical? Precision Electrical Contractors in Salina brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in Central Kansas since 2003. Precision Electric's focus on quality and performance combined with their experience and dedication creates a winning set of finished products which saves their customers money. Don't rely on so-so electrical. Visit the team at Precision Electrical Contractors. Online at PECSalina.com. Warm weather is here, and it's our favorite time of year at Abilene Car Sales. Lots of sunshine means it's time to spring into fun. The family at Abilene Car Sales is ready to help you find the perfect vehicle for summer fun. Add a reliable truck to pull that camper or boat. Perhaps upgrade your current ride to something a little more fun. And maybe even go topless. Oh, my. (laughs) You know what I mean, right? Stop by and save on Northwest 3rd or see our inventory at AbileneCarSales.com and spring into fun. Area athletes and even weekend warriors have a big home field advantage. Salina Regionals Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. Working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries or to heal through surgery and rehabilitation. You can count on Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Timothy Hawks and sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle. Along with an A-team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at SalinaRegionalSportsMedicine.com. Comfort Heating and Air and Salina Post are proud to announce the Good Neighbor Award, sharing stories of friendship and kindness right here in our community. Go to Salina Post now and nominate someone you know. It could be as simple as a neighbor that shoveled your snow this past winter or brings you fresh vegetables from their garden each year. Each week, we'll give away one of Robbie's famous cheesecakes to say thank you to your nominee. It's the Good Neighbor Award on Salina Post with the company that cares, Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares where comfort Hey there, you got grass? I mean the green kind, partner. Outlaw Lawn Care will be right there when your grass needs a cutting. Whether commercial or residential, Outlaw Lawn Care will treat you like family. Your yard gets that kind of treatment, too. Good folks all around. Military and first responder discounts, free estimates, and competitive rates. Here comes the phone number. 75-201-5532. 201-5532. Outlaw Lawn Care. No rooting, tooting, fly by night, lawn mowing going on here. We bag high prices as well as we bag grass. Search Outlaw Lawn Care on Facebook. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Welcome back to Tony's Pizza Event Center. Devin Haney along with Russ Castle, Brian Berner, and Big Sam Pretty producing and engineering. And what was a 10-point lead at the end of the first quarter for the Omaha Beef, 19-9. Salina has come back now. They've scored 20 points to Omaha 6 during that last stretch before halftime. Salina takes a four-point lead into the intermission. We're just about ready for third-quarter action. As we take a look at the Southern Division game between Albuquerque's Duke City Gladiators and the Amarillo Venom, and Duke City has now taken a touchdown lead as they go up by seven. And also in the Southern Division, the Oklahoma Flying Aces playing the North Texas Savages. They're up by 14 points. And in Iowa, the Sioux City Bandits defending their turf at Tyson Event Center, leading the Wichita Force. 28 to 14. We'll go down the field. Brian Berner, your thoughts on the first half and what you would like to see here in the second. Well, I'd like to see the Liberty continue to keep the lead. But thoughts, you know, it's one of those things that uh, penalties and turnovers, you know, Coach O'Neill is one thing that he says all the time. You know, we've got to keep those at a minimum. I think those were, were some things that. Uh, you know, we're against Salina. Uh, a couple, I thought, critical penalties. The big thing that I'm looking at, though, for Omaha, I'd be interested to find out if they've ever gone into the second half now trailing. 
you know, how often have they had to play from behind so far this season? Yeah, you know, just something you talk about with Omaha and their win streak, you know, and their, their one loss that they've had. And, Brian, I'm going to piggyback off what you said about Coach Ron O'Neill, you know, penalties and turnovers. Got that one turnover, that one fumble by Daniel McKinney, the, Daniel McKinney and the penalty yards are three penalties for Salina for 24 yards, so considerably less than what they had in the in the first half last week against Sioux City and one penalty for five yards against Omaha. Salina ready to get the ball back. Keep in mind, too, the last two scoring drives for Omaha, they were held to field goals. They didn't even get in the end zone. Here's the kick by Arillo. And that ball is going to take a bounce off the turf, then over the wall through the end zone. That's about as well as you can get five yard ball. line. Kick First down. Come out to the five yard line where the Salina Liberty will start this third quarter of action. So basically, it was a run for the Salina Liberty after they trailed to begin the second quarter, 19 to nine. Salina went on a 20 to nothing run, and they were able to limit last two Omaha scores to just field goals and still lead 29 to 25 here at the intermission. As we start third quarter action now, they have a chance to extend that lead. Yes, yeah, Salina coming out. Andrew Jackson, 9 of 13 in the first half for 65 yards and two touchdowns. And it's kind of been the rushing attack from Tracy Brooks with seven rushes with 53 yards. So and we saw Tracy Brooks break a couple, and then we saw Rashad Pargo on a jet sweep break a couple. So it'll be interesting to see what they, Salina comes out with here in the second half. Andrew Jackson with Tracy Brooks standing on the goal line. Tracy Brooks to the left. He'll take the handoff, sweep it to the right-hand side. Has a defensive lineman chasing. Tracy breaks that tackle, but then runs right into Tyrell Green. Green will bring him down after a gain of about three. That'll bring up second down and seven for the Liberty. As we view it here, high atop the Tony's Pizza event center, the Salina Liberty wearing their dark blue jerseys and blue helmets will work right to left. Omaha wearing the mostly black jerseys with black helmets. Orange on the shoulder pads with the big white numerals. They are defending as we start here in the third quarter. 29-25, Liberty, second down and six now after a gain of four on that first down run by Tracy Brooks. Receivers on each side in motion. Snap back to Jackson, looking over the middle of the field. Has a receiver, and for the first time tonight, we have Ed Smith Jr. in the action. He's going to make his first catch on his first offensive touch at the 19-yard line. It's good for a Liberty first down as the former Fort Hay State Tiger moves the chains. And we may be expecting to see him a little more involved in the offense, especially, guys, after the game he had last week where he had three touchdowns. Yeah, if you listen to pregame with Coach Ron, he uh, – he, he praised Ed Smith for not only the last game, but the last two or three games he's had. And with his first catch tonight, you know, maybe he could come in, in under the radar in the second half. Three receivers on the right-hand side. The two in motion in the slot and the outside. Big pass down the field, and it's going to be picked off. Omaha takes it away, and that ball just ill-advised. And again, guys, I go back to turnovers. This is the second one tonight for the Liberty where they turn the ball over. First on a fumble by Daniel McKinney. Here on an interception by Andrew Jackson, and they both come, Brian, on first down. Yeah, that time by uh, Andrew Jackson's kind of following Coach O'Neill, trying to plead his case. Had two receivers down in the corner, but unfortunately there were three defensive players for Omaha right there. They were just able to step right in front to grab that interception away. Second turnover of the night for Salina. And that'll give Omaha the ball and all the momentum that the Liberty would have to start here with the third quarter with the lead and the football has gone away as Derek Bernard and the Omaha Beef offense back out onto the field. Here's the read option. Bernard out on the edge, puts a stiff arm into Travis Taylor, but Taylor still brings him down. That'll be a gain of about five for Derek Bernard as Travis Taylor hung on that time. Also, Bernard very smart to go down as big Chris Mays was bearing down on him. The former Georgia Bulldog spent some time with the Atlanta Falcons. You don't want him to hit you at all. Chris Mays tips the scales at 370 pounds and he's six foot four. Bernard though with a six yard gain brings up second down and four. Two receivers on the right in motion. They hand it off to the running back and this is going to be a shoestring tackle but still stumbling for a first down as Antonio Bray. And Bray will make it past the sticks by a yard. He'll make it out to the 17 yard line and a new set of downs for the Omaha Beef. Seen that delayed handoff by Omaha with, with Derek Bernard and Antonio. Kind of kind of stalls out the Liberty defense for a second. They're not sure, you know, pass run and, you know, the, the handoff comes and he still gets, you know, six, seven yards on a carry. First down and 10. 
for the beat. Bernard flushed out of the pocket. Latimer chasing. He cuts back between two defenders. He split Latimer and Mays. Jake stays with it, though. He's going to catch Derek downfield as Bernard gets all the way across the midfield stripe at the 25. Gets the first down by a yard before Latimer brings him down from behind. Dontre Matthews there to slow his progress, but still a very slippery Derek Bernard gets into the second level and gets a first down for the beat. Yeah, and Derek Bernard is a threat to run the football. You know, four, four attempts for 16 yards in the first half, you know, with his longest being 25 yards. So he's still a threat to run the football as well as passing it. His rushing yardage through the first four games with the beef, very impressive. Here's a give now off to the left-hand side. The Omaha beef coming into this game through the first four games as the beef quarterback. He's already second now on the team in rushing with 227 yards and two touchdowns. Yes. San Antonio Bray and a beautiful tackle that time by Naquan Thomas coming in from the linebacker spot. Talk about Bernard in the rushing game again. This is just his fifth game with. Something big for Salina here in the second half is making the first tackle. They, Omaha had a lot of broken tackles in the first half to see if the first guy can hang on. Second down and 10. Bernard to the left-hand side. Has a pass dropped. It was a receiver who was camped on his knees. Had the ball come in and get to him in his hands and couldn't complete the catch. That was former Liberty receiver Donovan Raspberry. Raspberry goes back to the huddle and pats his chest, says, QB, that's my fault. That'll bring up now a third down and 10. The Raspberry wide open on the sideline as the DB was respecting his, his deep game and his speed and just dropped to his knees and just couldn't corral the catch from Derek Bernard. Isaiah Barfield providing coverage that time. That'll be Dontre Matthews on the right-hand side in coverage. Bernard back to pass. Here comes Naquan Thomas on a blitz to the end zone. Kendrick Harper, the only one that had a chance at it other than Brian Berner. Ryan's effort, though, minimal on that play as Kendrick Harper watched it hit the wall, and now it'll be fourth down. Was it, was it pretty obvious my back in a way? Yes. It looked like maybe both hands weren't eligible to make that interception. Well, I was height restricted from kind of reaching over the wall there. You have plenty of room down there, Brian. Yeah. Microphone in one hand, delicious beverage in the other. So now... Arillo will come on for the field goal attempt. It is coming from midfield. It is hooking, it is slicing, and it is going in. Media timeout. Media. And media timeout already coming as Omaha gets the long field goal. Their last three offensive possessions have all been field goals. But they've crawled back within one here, 29 to 28. The beef back within one, Liberty football. When we come back, 9.43 left to go third quarter as you listen to Champions Indoor Football right here on the IA. at c-o-l-e strongcarpet.com professional service that treats you like family when termites strike your home or business you want to fight back with the best has been termite and pest control to the rescue with over 57 years experience they offer the best of options including the new basf high precision injection treatment don't let termites get you down with one phone call to Hasman's, they can put one in the win column for you. Call Hasman Termite and Pest Control today or visit HasmanTermite.com and follow them on Facebook. The Liberty plays here, here. Salinas Sports Station is KINA. Back after our first media timeout of the second half and an Omaha field goal, three consecutive Offensive drives for Omaha now resulting in field goals, and they are back within one, 29-28. Beef back within one, and now the kick by Arillo goes over the wall, and it will come back out for the Liberty at the midfield. Kick strike. out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 25-yard line. First down. So not only do you have to cure the turnover bug, Russ, you also have to quit making them in bad times. We were talking during the break. 
Salina comes out the first two plays of that drive. They start at the five in two plays. They're out at the 20-yard line. And then on first down, you throw an interception 15 yards downfield. It's just not only is it not necessary, it's just it's bad. Yeah, and we talked about it. You know, that's that's a shot to take on on third down. We Like we talked about it, you can understand. But on first down, after you've ran two plays and got 15 yards, you, it's just kind of ill-advised to why to throw it that deep down the field that early. First down and 10 now. Salina coming out with an empty backfield. Jackson back to pass. Throws an out route to the left-hand side. As he was under a little bit of pressure that time, coming in on the blitz was Kwame Bell, but he was completing the pass to Tracy Brooks for a gain of five. And that'll bring up second down and five as Salina moves it into beat territory. Just seems like them short routes against the wall have been there all night. And Andrew Jackson just wants to go down the field, you know, see if they can work the walls and work the middle of the field as it continues to come wide open. Trips on the right-hand side. They'll pitch it out to Brooks that side. He jumped right through a blocking situation between Calvin McCoy and one of the defensive linemen for Omaha. Tracy will get two yards on the play, and that'll bring up second down and about three. Let's give a nod to the uh, offensive line for Salina right now. As, yeah. You know, Derek Bernard hasn't really... Derek Bernard, as they say, Andrew Jackson has, hasn't really been under a whole lot of pressure. You know, he's been able to just slide the pocket and step up and throw. So a nod to the offensive line of Salina. Very good, as usual. Three receivers, left-hand side. They're going to fake the pitch out to Brooks this time. Jackson looking downfield, turns and finds a defensive lineman right in his face, and now he's going to have to throw a pass, and it's for a loss. Tracy Brooks was still hanging out on the left-hand side, but Jackson that time was looking downfield. By the time he came to his check down on the left-hand side, Brian, he was under pressure and had to get rid of it. Yeah, he went to you know, his, his final option, and unfortunately, good coverage by Omaha led to the loss of yardage, fourth down, and now Jimmy Allen out on the field. One-point lead for the Liberty chance, if he can connect put it up to a four. This will be about a 35-yard attempt for Jimmy Allen. It's coming from the other side of the midfield stripe, almost the same distance that Ari Ilo just made his for Omaha. The kick is up. The kick is good. So Jimmy Allen and having a kicker's battle now with his counterpart on the other side, Zeke Arillo. And Arillo and Allen <laughs> just kind of having one of those, I'll see your kick and raise you a couple more yards. They go back and forth now on kicks from the midfield stripe, and Liberty back up by four with seven and a half minutes left to go. Yeah, yeah I mean, you like to see Jimmy Allen connecting. You know, we talked about the game he had last week, you know, missing them a couple extra points early. Kind of kind of was like, my bad, guys. You know, let, let me turn it around for you. And then he comes out and has or near a perfect second half, you know, nailing a 40-plus yard field goal where, Honestly, before the kick, we were talking up here that, you know, at that point, you just want to make sure it gets out of the back of the end zone so it can't get returned. And now you come out with a 30 to 40 to 45-yard field goal, and you're like, Jimmy, go out there and give me some points. Yeah. Well, and it's unfortunate, too, just time management and the way the clock ran down at the end of the first quarter that Jimmy didn't get a chance to kick one there at the end of the first half, Brian. We were looking and saying, you know, at least give him a chance to get you some points here before you go to the locker room. But the way that all played out in that series of plays, that didn't happen. Yeah, it just, just basically ran out of time. And, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy's had a good season as far as being able to hit from distance. And I don't know, I'm, I'm stretching it, guys, but I think, uh, you know, Potentially the folks at the uh, Springfield Inn up in Holly, Michigan, and in Karen, they better be taking care of their customers because Jimmy did uh, did a good job that time. What do That's you think? Right. There's got to be some kind of special, doesn't there, every time he makes I, I a kick? so. Around a fireball or something? I mean, I don't know. What do you do in that situation? Here's a kick now by Jimmy Allen that skips off to the left-hand side. It looks like it did make contact with the sidewall. So it will be interesting, as we always are, to see where the officials decide to sometimes it appears blindly spot these kicks as they communicate now and they will talk about where the offense will start here for the Omaha beat. It appeared that a fan down there in the party pit area. The kick the was touched side. by a fan on his side of the wall. It'll be at that spot first down. Okay. So Good call Russ. Touched by a fan on the side so it'll be dead right there. They said he was he was over the wall. He did not reach over, so the ball will be just like it hit the wall right there. A great kick by Jimmy Allen, as we've seen some of the returners from Omaha be able to get it close to midfield. So good starting position here for the defense. 
So we'll have to talk to our folks in Michigan and see exactly what they're doing to celebrate these wonderful kicks. I mean, it's we don't have it in Kansas, but you know, you got some ice house up north there. Maybe, maybe it's around to those. Hey, I'm in. We need some <laughs> of that down here. Maybe we need to go visit them up there. First down and ten now for Omaha. They trail by four. Seven minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Bernard steps up and he's going to run again, and he's going to take a hit from the front. Glancing blow from Detre Matthews, but then Jake Latimer comes in, and the former Hutch Blue Dragon, before going to Iowa State, comes in, takes him down after a gain of about eight. Derek Bernard is about a half step away from taking a violent shot from one of these defensive linemen, in particular Jake Latimer, who appears to have been beating down on him all night. Second down and two for Omaha as they operate on their own side of the field. They're going to sneak the delay into Phillips. Looks like Phillips is going to try to the outside now after the inside didn't work. Dontre Matthews there to take him down. Actually, check that. That's Antonio Bray that time on the misdirection where he started out. And I think it was designed to go to the right-hand side, but when he tried that hole and it was plugged up, he very smart, very intelligently checked out of that play and sprinted back to the left-hand side where he was able to die for the sticks and beat Dontre Matthews. Another first down for the Omaha beat. Guys, one of the things that was kind of impressive that time as the runner came back across, Derek Bernard stepped in, put a block on Javier Dyer to kind of help get an extra one or two yards. They're in the crowd around Brian now in the field, Mike, getting into it. First down and 10 for the beef again to the right-hand side on a run and a punishing blow this time. Leveled on Antonio Bray, Latimer, and Dana Harris that time coming in, along with Naquan Thomas. We've talked about the front, you know, Javier Dyer and uh, Jake Latimer, Dana Harris Jr. having an exceptional game. And, you know, we saw Naquan last week have a few penalties early and they kind of getting him lined up right, and he appears to be settling in at that middle linebacker spot. This is the first time tonight, guys, we've seen Dyer and Harris in there together. That's kind of a bulky defensive line for Liberty Standards. Usually they go with the speed rushers of Latimer and Taylor, but Taylor right now not in there. Bernard this time tries to throw a screen out to the right-hand side. That's that punishing play they scored on in the first half to Antonio Bray, and that time the ball out of Bernard just a little bit too much out in front of Bray, and it goes incomplete. So a third down and eight now coming up for the beat. Yeah, and that's that's big that you say that, that 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 play scored on the first half because if Bernard doesn't lead Bray just enough there, he's wide open the sideline running up to Brian Berner in the end zone. Third down and eight. Ball setting just short of the midfield stripe. Bernard back to pass. Here comes Latimer. He gets rid of it down the side. And it's picked off. Now Trey Matthews with the interception right at the goal line. He had a beat on that football all the way through. And Dontre looked like the wide receiver on that play as he was able to pluck a 28-yard pass out of the air. And Dontre Matthews tries to sling it up in the stands. We have a challenge with Dontre we got to talk about. And that's one that we, after an interception, we're betting him he can't throw one up in the press box. He tried that he tried. time. <laughs> But more importantly, let's talk about the trend that the Liberty are starting, and that is secondary interceptions in the second half. They get another one there for the second consecutive week from Detray Matthews. Yeah, he started the – he he did have – the offender, the receiver had two steps on him right there, and Derek Bernard underthrew the ball just enough for Detray to make a beat on it. And nonetheless, you know, just he started it last week in the second half, and he starts it again this week. Liberty quickly on the field. Andrew Jackson has him ready to go. He's going to hand it off to Tracy Brooks. Tracy Brooks breaking one tackle, two tackles, three tackles. Now in a crowd as he goes out to the nine-yard line and taken down there. The ball came free. Omaha has it. They're claiming possession. But Tracy Brooks. Ruling on the field is forward for progress was stopped. Again, Russ, Second down. Half, forward progress was stopped. Yeah, forward progress was obviously stopped right there, you know, before. Because there was... You know, six guys, six Omaha uh, beef defenders on him, along with four four Salina guys. So, uh, obviously, his progress was stopped, but nonetheless, a four-yard gain. Salina quicking in the pace here in the second half as they are getting in and out of the huddle quickly. Here's the fake end around to Pargo. Now they're going to throw it out there, and Jackson bounces it at his ankles. Now, all of a sudden, it's a third down and six. You know, you, that play worked well in the, in the first half, and Andrew Jackson... You know, might have did a blessing in disguise there for Salina as throwing it at the feet of Pargo as two defenders were beating down on him over there on the wall. It would have been a no gain or maybe even a loss. Three minutes left to go in the third. This has been a fast-moving quarter. 
right now with field goals. Not seen a touchdown here yet in this quarter. Empty backfield for Andrew Jackson. They have a third down and six, does the lineup. Jackson with a clean snap from McCoy. Wants to go deep, has a receiver wide open, and that's going to be an uncontested walk-in touchdown for Daniel McKinney. Not only was he open, he was the only guy inside of the 20-yard line on that side of the field. Rashad Parker was on the other side of the field, contested, but McKinney, I don't know how he was so open. Brian Burner, let's go down to you. Yeah, I, I have no idea, but from this vantage point, you could see as soon as McKinney was 10 yards committed to that route, there was nobody around. Jackson was able to look, check, and just throw. Nice toss, McKinney able to run right underneath it, easily goes in for the touchdown. And now, sometimes, sometimes <laughs> Russ, we see, no matter who the quarterback is, when you have somebody that wide open, the quarterback misses him just a little bit. I don't think we can stress how wide open he was, though. And You know, you wonder when the ball's floating in the air that long, just get there, get there, and let him make the catch. Mr. $20 bill that time, Andrew Jackson dropped it right in the bread basket of Daniel McKinney. Now we have procedure on Ball's the liberty start. here. Number 65, the offense. And I have to give Five a call. I don't know who the young lady is. Retry. Obviously a friend of Daniel McKinney sitting over in the section. But he threw the touchdown football to her. And with baby on right arm, one-handed that football and brought it in with her left hand. That may be the catch of the game. That and the Pargo catch in the first half, we'll probably have to, have to do co-catches of the game on that. Yeah, yeah, I, you're <laughs> right. It was impressive for sure. But Pargo wasn't holding a child either, so... She may have the nod. <laughs> Scooting back just a little bit, Tracy Brooks will put this football down at the 15, and it looks like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. So Omaha media timeout. The board, but they do give up media. the touchdown. Daniel McKinney running away, uncontested, walked it in for six, and the Liberty now leading by 10 with 2:46 left to go here in the third quarter. A 90-second timeout, 38-28 Liberty, right here on KINA. Have you thought about upgrading your vehicle but hate spending all day at a dealership? In severe weather, we experienced a good amount of hail. If your RV sustained hail damage, you don't have to wait for your insurance company. Just take your camper to Four Seasons RV Acres. The service department at Four Seasons works with most major insurance companies and will help you submit your camper claim and get you fixed up in time for the summer weather ahead. If you want to trade your damaged RV for a new one, a great deal is waiting for you at Four Seasons RV Acres, just six miles east of Ambeline on I-70, where the fun begins. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. As we check scores from around Champions Indoor Football, let's first go north to Sioux City, where the Bandits holding off the Wichita Force 35 to 14. The Force will be the opponent next week for the Salina Liberty. Again, that'll be a Sunday game scheduled for a 405 kick at Interest Bank Arena. Want to join us in a short road trip for the Salina fans on a Sunday afternoon next weekend. A 405 kick at Interest Bank Arena, about an hour and 45 minutes driving safely from here in Salina. Also, Oklahoma, the Aces, they're still up on the North Texas Savages, 14 to nothing, and the Amarillo Venom trailing the Duke City Gladiators in the South, 28 to 21. That game just getting out of halftime, starting the third quarter here at Tony's Pizza Event Center. It's 38 to 28 as Salina has gone from being down by 10, now leading by 10, a little 20-point swing. But guys, we still have a lot of football left to play here. 2:46 left to play in the third quarter, and we've all been around this game enough. We know how it can go. We can see seven different seasons of a sitcom right now in front of us because <laughs> we're, we probably we've seen a little bit of everything, but I'm sure we haven't seen it all. I mean, we saw it last week with Sioux City with 
Dietre making that interception last week to kind of spark it and get the momentum swinging, but it still was back and forth till late in the fourth quarter when Salina took a late lead. And, you know, maybe the same thing happened in here with Dietre sparking the defense again with another interception. I think we just found out who the backup quarterback is not. Yes, that I mean, is that's a fact. <laughs> he tried to throw us the football, and it was not close. Keep doing what you've been doing, man. That's getting interceptions. That's why he's here. And he got another good one there. And as I said, he looked like the receiver on that play, not the defensive back. Here's a kickoff now by Jimmy Allen that gets deflected. Omaha trying to return it, and it's just a train wreck of people over on the far side next to the party pit wall. Omaha does not get it back to the 20-yard line. They were close, but there are bodies flying all over the place. And, Brian, this game, we've touched on it a couple of times, but I don't think we've talked about it enough, how physical this game is tonight. Yeah, I had a, a friend that came. First time he had been to an indoor game, we were talking at halftime. He made that. He goes... He couldn't believe how physical this game was, how fast it was. He is definitely a guy that admitted he'll be back. That's We challenge him. It doesn't matter what arena you go to. It could be yeah. Omaha. It could be Sioux City. It could be Salina. Bring a friend who's never been because I guarantee they're coming back. This league needs attendance no matter what the teams are. And that's all it is. That's a challenge. Just bring a friend every day to a game that you're coming to that hasn't been because I guarantee they're coming back. Here's a run now to the right-hand side on first down by Antonio Bray. Omaha will pick up three yards on this play. It'll be third down and seven. Yeah, and you talk about bringing a friend to a game. It, regardless whether it's here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center or at the Ralston Arena for Omaha or at Interest for Wichita, ticket prices are very reasonable for adults. And, chill, you know, kids' tickets here, five bucks, which they're similar all the way around the league. Second down and seven. Two slot receivers in motion this time. Bernard goes out to the flat where he has a wide open Antonio Bray. Bray, a little shake and bake, will make it across midfield and attain the first down on a gain of about seven yards. He will be inside of the 20-yard line. Now we see Omaha wanting to quicken the pace here as they go no huddle. Empty backfield, no huddle. They're running back right now. Antonio Bray lined up out wide as a wide receiver. The slot guy's in motion. Waiting on the chains to get set as we approach the one-minute mark of the third quarter. Center for Omaha. Back to Bernard. Derek looking. A little bit of pressure. Now here comes Latimer off the edge. Latimer throws Bernard down, but Derek gets rid of the football, and he lands it right in the basket of Jaden Swinson, who makes a catch. We saw Jaden in the first half drop a couple of touchdowns. He makes the catch there over the middle of the field, and Jake Latimer once again it gets right to Derek Bernard and throws him down. I mean, we've talked about the front three for Salina getting pressure on Derek Bernard and flushing him, but you got to give a nod to Bernard to being able to get the ball out for not only just getting the ball out, but making completions when he's rushed and being taken to the ground. Think he's missing his offensive line from Salina? <laughs> Here's a clip now once again with a big hit by Dontre Matthews. Antonio Bray got into the hole and he was dancing around, and Dietre comes in and absolutely knocks his cleats off as Dontre Matthews gets involved. We talked about Dontre last week. You know, he's not a big guy, Brian. He's kind of skinny guy, but, boy, he took some receivers out last week, checking them at the line of scrimmage. He can be physical. He definitely That's the end of the third quarter. He's a great athlete. Plays with a lot of emotion. He saw it. He took advantage, took the guy down. That takes us down the end of the third quarter. Fourth and final quarter, right around the corner, 38-28. to 28. Salina leading Omaha. 15 minutes on the clock, and we'll be back for the final quarter. After this, you're listening to Salina Liberty Football as they play the Omaha Beef right here on KINA. mom's car because noah i'm hungry and every monday we go to rib crib where kids 12 and under eat free all day ava mom and dad love their menu and i like the ribs ava they get my fingers gooey <laughs> ava what noah i like mondays at rib crib too but today's saturday 
You're just a couple of days away. Two free kids' entrees with each adult entree purchase all day Mondays at Rip Crib in Salina on South 9th in front of Lowe's. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Big Sam Pretty is our producer and engineer. For Salina Liberty Football as they host the Omaha Beef 38-28. We're ready for fourth quarter action. Omaha has the football, and they're in Salina's side of the field at the 11-yard line for a third down and two. Two for nine on third downs for Omaha for 22% this game. And as you mentioned in the first half, they're last in the league. There's the fake first handoff. They get it to the second guy through. Smart decision for Antonio Bray to take that football as he puts his head down, splits two of his blockers, and ends up plunging ahead for the first down. It's now first and goal for the Beef as they will put this football down and spot it for a first and goal from the seven-yard line. Bray on the season coming into this game. 13 rushing touchdowns. He is the Omaha Beef's leading rusher at 365 yards. Also has three receiving touchdowns. We saw him already with one here tonight. Bernard with Bray on his left hip, and this one's going to be stopped. That procedure penalty against the Omaha. Ball start. Number 72, offense. So five yard penalty. Five, they'll go from the still first down. To 12, or it's still first down and goal. Only the second penalty of the game for Omaha. The first one was a false start from a wide receiver in the first half. It was kind of off his count when the receivers came in motion. So only the second penalty for Omaha tonight, which probably is what's kept them in this ball game. That's a great point. 10 point Liberty lead. First down and goal, now from the 12 after the five yard penalty. Bernard trying to get everybody lined up. Now he's going to go empty backfield with four wide receivers. Bray comes in motion, fake handoff. Bernard has to slip around a would be defensive tackle, and they're going to throw a touchdown, but it's coming back. It's going to be holding on Omaha. As Travis Taylor got in there, Brian. And they're going to say the Omaha offensive lineman took him down to the ground. Oh, oh, I'm not quite sure what the discussion is here. Maybe which lineman it was because he had two on top of him. Right, and there's two flags down on the on the field. Yeah, to me it looked like there was some offensive holding. There are two fouls, two. both by the offense. Illegal motion. Two penalties, both on Omaha. Three players in motion towards the line shift. of scrimmage the at the same time. That penalty's declined. Holding, penalty. holding. Number 70. So that'll back Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Omaha now taking two penalties that will back him up. Almost to the midfield strike. We're sitting first and goal at the at the 22 yard line here of Salina. So getting kind of bailed out and we called it only two penalties up to that last fall start and then you get two more tacked on top of you well only one will go in the record books but two right there nonetheless and with a 10 point lead at this point in the fourth quarter you're almost giving jake latimer and travis taylor the green light it's first and goal from the 22 bernard with a back in the backfield he's going to step up in the pocket now he's going to throw it at the last minute it has a receiver and it's nearly picked Ooh. off then it's nearly caught for a touchdown but dropped ultimately Jaden Swinson has had a night to forget tonight for the Omaha Beef as that football first went through the hands of the initial receiver crossing in front of everybody. It went off his fingertips, off of a Liberty defenseman, and then landed right in the face mask of Jaden Swinson. Nobody can make the catch off the deflections. It ends up falling harmlessly for the Liberty defense, incomplete. And now it's second down and goal from the 22. Yeah, we've talked about him dropping, you know, two would-be touchdown passes in this game. That one, you can't really throw on him nonetheless, but still hit him in the lap and a big second down and goal from the 22. One back in the backfield, two receivers in motion on the right-hand side. Bernard will step up. He'll be hit from behind. Travis Taylor took the football from Derek Bernard, and this might be Salina football. It is. Derek Bernard was holding the football out on his right-hand side. Travis Taylor comes in, gets the strip, sack, fumble recovery, and Liberty will take the football away. Yeah, a clear strip sack there by Taylor. and 
you know, you just talked about it, giving him the green light, and he gave the one step in and reversed it out. It looks, appears that we have a challenge flag on the field. His coach is not happy. Omaha already challenging the play, Brian. You had a better look than we Omaha, did. Omaha, Omaha. Uh, it did look like the ball was stripped. The question was Omaha made. has elected to At challenge point, the ruling on the field of a stripped? fumble and recovery was by the, the defense. Was actually on the ground at that time? So I think that's what they're going to have to go in and look at. Question's going to be with as many players that were around in that vicinity, will there be a clear camera angle to overturn the call? So it's a stoppage in play and it's a time to grab a snack. 12.38 left to go. We'll have a two minute timeout. We'll be back hopefully soon with the officials' ruling. It's a 10 point Salina lead. Back with the ruling after this on KINA. School's out. Summertime's here, and it's never too early to plan for next fall, especially at Salina Used Cars, where we have so many great school cars and rides for that summer job. Vehicles starting at $2,900 and over a dozen vehicles for under $9,900. Payments starting at $99 and 100% credit approval. Qualifications apply, prices plus tax. See dealer for details. Visit both of our locations on the corner of Crawford and Ohio or visit us online 24-7 at Salina Used Cars. PRP, or platelet-rich plasma injection therapy, has received quite a bit of attention since it's used by many professional athletes. Professional football players like Peyton Manning and Des Bryant have used PRP therapy for sports injuries and to avoid surgery. But you don't have to be a world-class athlete with millions of dollars for this cutting-edge therapy. PRP is available to you in the Salina Pain Clinic. Call the doctors for a consultation and see if this treatment is right for you. See them at 200 South 5th in the Salina Surgical Arts Center. Are you sprucing up your home this spring? Think about your garage door. In most cases, your garage door is 50% of your home's front facade and curb appeal. It's also your home's smile, if you will. This month, when you buy a new garage door from Overhead Door Company, you will get a 50% discount on all decorative hardware. Take a look at your garage door now. Then make that call to Overhead Door Company of North Central Kansas in Salina and McPherson. Or visit them on the web at odcnck.com. Think about the word precision. The ruling precision on the field of a fumble and, and recovery by the defense and has been confirmed. You want when it comes to Omaha will lose a timeout. They're first of the half. Brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in Central Kansas since 2003. Precision Electric's focus on quality and performance, combined with their experience and dedication, creates a winning set of finished products which saves their customers money. Don't rely on so-so electrical. Visit the team at Precision Electrical Contractors online at pecsalina.com. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. We possibly just set a record for the fastest review in Champions Indoor Football history. It is the ruling on the field stands. So Travis Taylor with a sack, with a strip, and a fumble recovery on that play. And now, quickly, the Liberty come back with Tracy Brooks, eight yards. And talk about Travis Taylor tonight, guys. Russ, we'll go to you first. That is the second quarterback sack that he has had now. He's been quiet. I made the comment to you, Russ, before the game. Boy, Travis has been stuck on three and a half sacks for a long time. He does have ten tackles for loss, but he has been a three and a half quarterback sacks for a long time. Now he's a five and a half. Yeah, he's kind of been stuck at that, you know, tackle position and now having a breakout game, as you would say. I feel like we're going to get a heavy dose of Tracy Brooks here on this drive. He has two runs now in a row. He has a first down. And if you can chunk off five yards on average every time you hand it off to Tracy Brooks, I do not know why you would go away from him. 11.47 left to go here. The big sack, strip, fumble recovery from Travis Taylor has put Salina in a really good position, leading by 10, but there's still a lot of time left to go here with 11.35 left to play. When you talk about a heavy dose of Tracy Brooks and maybe offsetting it with a little jet motion in there with Rashad Fargo as we saw that work in the first half. First and 10, Liberty after two runs by Tracy Brooks. Now they're going to pitch it out to Brooks off the left-hand side. Lots of contact. Boy, it's tough to go in there. Not only the contact, Brian, on the run, as everybody sees on the running back, but the blocking out in front is so physical. Yeah, both both teams are going hard at it. And, and Tracy does a good job of trying to find those holes. He, he is so quick. Makes those quick jump backs to try to dive in get those extra yards. I'm surprised Salina isn't kind of milking that play clock down a little bit further than they are. I think maybe there's a little bit of confidence right now by the Liberty, and that is Tracy Brooks left, Tracy Brooks right, Tracy Brooks up the middle, and that's what's going to happen right now. When you have the best running back in the league, 
you're going to give him the ball. And now's the time to do it when you have a 10-point lead and you're trying to get that clock down. But I think Karan O'Neal also wants to hang some points here. Yeah, we've talked about what this game means, not only for other reasons than the standings, you know, with a with a big schedule that Omaha's got coming up. And if you Salina can get away with the win here, but we talked to Coach O, and he, he wants to put up points. Third down and three. Ball sitting at the 11-yard line as we go at the 10-minute mark. Here's the end around. Pargo, Rashad, has to slam on the brakes. Now he has to get away from an Omaha defenseman. Still looking for some room, and he's going to go all the way back to the 15 and then finally brought down there. So that third and three now is going to turn up into a fourth down and seven as Rashad Pargo is just running, 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 trying to look for some space, and he's brought down at the 15-yard line. But at that time, it looked like Andrew was, was coming over to put a block that uh, could have helped spring Pargo a little bit more, but he chose the wrong guy to block. He actually cut back in to try to block the guy in the middle when there was one on the outside. He could have dove in and hopefully, you know, at least sprung him for more yards than, uh, than he got. Jimmy Allen on now. He will kick this football, and it's going to be a 30-yard attempt. Placement down, Kelvin McCoy's snap was really good. Tracy Brooks' hold was perfect, and Jimmy Allen pumping that right. Media timeout. Media. Getting another field goal in this game, and now he has extended the Liberty lead from 10 out to a Baker's dozen. 9-11 left to play, 41-28, to and that was a big, big stop. We talked about this earlier, Russ, with the interception that the Liberty threw. Omaha only got three points out of the interception, but when you're not scoring seven and you're giving up three, that's a 10-point swing. And now Salina able to get one of those on the Omaha beat. Yeah, and, you know, go back to the to the D-Tray interception that kind of set off this defense to do what they're doing. Get a signal now for immediate timeout. Let's take it. 9-11 left to go here in the fourth quarter. 41-28. Salina leading Omaha. You're listening to it right here on KINA. and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. The name is JJ Lawn Care, but don't let the name fool you. It's not just lawns they care about, it's their customers. JJ Lawn Care is a locally owned business that works with people in and around Salina on more than just lawns. The spring season is here, and now's the time to act for a healthy, lush lawn. Call now for a free estimate on a four or six step program. Let JJ Lawn Care come to the rescue for your fescue. Mm -hmm. Give them a call today, 820 7728. JJ Lawn Care, caring for more than just your lawn. Here, here. Salina Sports Station is KINA. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 41 to 28 is our score. 9 11 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Omaha set to get this football back from the Salina Liberty. They're awaiting the offering from Jimmy Allen. Antonio Bray back, standing inside of his own five yard line. Jimmy has it shaded to the right hand side of the hash marks. He will kick a bullet that will bounce off the turf, now off the wall to 12-yard line. Another kick well done, eliminating the chance for an Omaha return. Brian Burner. free kick hit the wall. It'll be first and 10 at that spot. Talked about, uh, you know, with Jimmy at halftime. Really, it's a science and everything that goes into setting up the game plan. They had an idea of what they wanted to do, try to keep the ball away from these return guys. Playing that ball, get that bounce off the wall. Nice execution by Jimmy. So he continues to do a good job, and it's something that is needed, and, and it's a situation right now. Again, Omaha, I think, is definitely a strange situation, trailing 
in the fourth quarter. Gary Bernard and this Omaha offense back out onto the field. Keep in mind, they give up on average 37 points a game on defense. They've given up 41 already here. Bernard, back to pass, scrambles out, steps to the left-hand side, hits his receiver, near first down yardage, making the catch is Jaden Swinson. Here's a score update for you from the CIF. The Duke City Gladiators pulling away from the Amarillo Venom. 42-21 to 21 now, that score in favor of Duke City. I don't know if the Oklahoma score is being updated. It still says 14 to nothing, start of the first. I'm guessing it has it. And then also Sioux City pulling away from Wichita, 35 to 14. Here it's 41 to 28. New set of downs for the Omaha beat at midfield. Bernard back to pass and Travis Taylor calls on him again for the third time tonight. It's a hat trick for Travis Taylor. His third sack on Derek Bernard. Bernard never saw him coming. And right now, if I'm Derek Bernard, I may have a talk with my left tackle, who right now is getting rented on that left side. Yeah, we talked about Derek Bernard having having three sacks all year and kind of being stuck on that number, and then he comes back, and now he has three sacks here tonight. And as you talk about it, the left tackle is getting an earful from Derek Bernard. And Travis, and great Travis for him, sitting there just on one knee, acts like he doesn't have anything left in the tank, but I guarantee he's going to come again. Bernard back to pass. Here's Taylor getting held oh. and taken down by the offensive lineman. No flag on the play miraculously. And Derek Bernard gets out of there and gets back to the 20-yard line. Brian, how is that not a penalty? Yeah, I, I have no idea. You Looks had a like, hold and a face yeah, mask he, there. It was. Lineman had a, an arm or what appeared to be around the shoulder pad and then the other one coming up around the helmet and literally tossed him to the ground. Injury timeout. That was one of those plays by the Omaha offensive lineman, Terrell Johnson, that basically I'm tired of getting beat, so I'm going to take you down at all costs. But there was no flag on the play. I mean, he almost put him in a chokehold right there. Got Naquan Thomas, it looks like, down on the field with a cramp. Assuming that he was running down field and just kind of all of a sudden looked at Travis Taylor and just laid down right next to him and took a rest right there. 7.25 left to go. Travis Taylor, 6 and a half sacks now on the season, three of them in this game. He got off to a great start this year, led the league in sacks through the first couple of games, and then just really got bottled up. Jake Latimer had more of an impact as he was coming from the other side. And we see games, guys, where a team will select somebody to pay attention to, if you will. We have never seen a team keep both of these guys out of their backfield. Yeah, like you said, he... Sitting on three sacks, so that kind of freed up Latimer as they were they were leading on Taylor, and so now, you know, Latimer had chased down Bernard early in the first half a few times and laid a few hits, and now you see Travis Taylor coming up with a strip sack, the fumble recovery, you know, and now another sack to make his third one on the night. And right now, it's also that lineup that we saw earlier in this game where Taylor was out, Javier Dyer and Dana Harris came in. Well, along with Jake Latimer. Well, now Latimer's out. Taylor's out there with Dyer and Dana Harris. And it appears that Detray has now moved up into the middle linebacker position. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if we've seen him in that middle linebacker spot this year. Remember, he was co-linebacker last week along with Naquan Thomas against that Sioux City rushing game. He can play there, and that's the luxury you have also bringing Winston Green off the bench. Winston now will go to safety along with Frankie Solomon. Winston leads the team in interceptions. Here comes the blitz. Detroit gets in there, but they go right into the middle of the field, and it's going to be a screen pass that's complete down to the five-yard line. Antonio Bray making his impact again on offense out of the backfield with a little slip screen in the middle of the field that he takes all the way down to the five, where it's first and goal from the five for the Omaha beef. Remember, Omaha has got a long stretch here, guys, without a touchdown. Yeah, you know, they traded field goal. Then Salina got a touchdown. Now it's kind of been kicker's game, you know, besides Daniel McKinney's touchdown. But De Bray is having himself a great game, and you wonder what could be if his line could protect Derek Bernard a little more. Bernard faking in this time. He's going to have another visitor in the backfield as Dana Harris comes in, and Harris takes Derek Bernard down. Travis Taylor again on the seat of his pants asking the official, what do I have to do to get a call here as he's held and thrown down once again? But that time, all the attention paid to Travis Taylor, and Dana Harris came storming through right in the face mask of Derek Bernard. That's that's the luxury Coach Ron O'Neill has with this defensive line. There's four guys, five guys that can rotate in and out. They can go from a power package to a speed rush on the outside, which not many teams in this league can go to. 
Omaha, second down and goal from the five. Two receivers in motion, one on each side. They're going to hand it off. Detroit comes sliding through. It's a fumble. Salina's going to have it. This could be a run back for Barfield. Isaiah stumbles, takes it back to the 24. The former Kansas Jayhawk, Isaiah Barfield, picks the fumble up and another takeaway for this Salina defense. Nope. Second half is where the turnovers live for this defense in Salina. And, Brian, that was a great bounce right into the hands of Isaiah Barfield. The strip may have belonged to Travis Taylor. I didn't see. Did you? I couldn't tell who stripped it away, but it was a, a great bounce that came up as Isaiah was running in. Tried to make a cut, but unfortunately he kind of lost his balance. I Nonetheless. Did, I did get visual confirmation, by the way, from statistician David Telly. It was Travis Taylor on the strip. I would say good, good eyes by, by Dave up there. You know, he asked me pregame if I had a set of binoculars for him, and I told him no, and he's doing pretty good. <laughs> so another takeaway by this Salina defense. They lead by 13 points, five and a half minutes left to go. Here's the gift, Tracy Brooks. Starts out right, counters back to the left, up against the wall, and he'll have a gain of about two and a half, maybe three yards on that. You just go back to Travis Taylor. You know, you, you, we just can't talk about him enough in the game that he has had. Coming back, you know, Detroit gets the first interception of the second half. We get no turnovers in the first half. Then we get, Travis Taylor gets a strip sack. Travis Taylor gets a strip. There's a theme going here with Travis Taylor that we would like to see continue for the rest of the season. I'm a mind-blowing stat for you after this second down and seven play for Salina. Jackson wanting to go deep, wants it all to the end zone. Ooh. And it's caught over the wall! We have to await the ruling, but it looks like a catch, and it Ooh. is! Touchdown! Salina! An unbelievable catch by, guess who? Daniel McKinney! We said in pregame, he may be one of the best receivers in the league, and he just went beast mode over the wall, hung that football onto his fingertips, and then took a terrible tumble over that sidewall back in the corner of the end zone. The official ran over, and McKinney shows him the touchdown. you got to be kidding me. Rashad Pargo, I'll see your catch in the middle underneath the goalpost, and I'll raise you flying over the corner of the 99 kg sign in the end zone. Just an unbelievable catch. Unbelievable display of athleticism by Daniel McKinney. And also another candidate for catch of the night was a young lady sitting in the first row that got Daniel McKinney's first touchdown. <laughs> She's smiling ear to ear. She doesn't care. Daniel might have just knocked her off the pedestal for catch of the night. Snap from Kelvin McCoy back to Tracy Brooks. Field goal point after by Jimmy Allen. Up and good. Salinas defense turning it up. And the stat I was going to give you guys before that play was this. Omaha, who once had a 10-point lead, they led 19-9. to They have not scored a touchdown since the 12-second mark of the first quarter. I, I, got, I got nothing to follow that up with. Just, you know, we, you see them drive the ball down the field. They, they drove the ball down the field the whole first half, but you go back to trading kicks for touchdowns early, and now Salinas trading touchdowns and Omaha's trading turnovers. Here's an update in that game in Enid, Oklahoma, the Flying Aces right now on top of the Savages of North Texas, 42 to nothing. There's your update on that game. Here it's 48-28 with 439 left to go. Also, Duke City extending that lead even more over the Amarillo Vidim, 49 to 21. And the Sioux City Bandits has their lead trimmed just a little bit by Wichita, 35-27 right now the score. And that was still a ton of time to go, six minutes left in the third. Might be one to pay attention to that Wichita and Sioux City game like we talked about earlier with Sioux City never being out. Salina going down to Wichita next weekend on a Sunday. The crowd getting into this one. They are very appreciative of the new addition for the Salina Liberty on the offensive side of the field. It's Daniel McKinney. And Daniel already tonight with two touchdowns. And it looks like him and Andrew Jackson already have a chemistry that could be bad news for the rest of the league. Yeah, it could be great going forward for Salina. Like you said, him and Daniel McKinney, as him and Rashad Pargo have had all year long. 4.39 left to go. Jimmy Allen with his right hand in the air, ready to offer another one back 
to Omaha's Antonio Bray. This one will make it to Bray. He'll take it at the nine off the bounce. Bray looking for space, hesitating. Now he tries to string it out to the right-hand side. There's a wall there and a tackle taken down by Frankie Solomon Jr. at the 19-yard line. So Omaha will come out again, and guys, this defensive line for the Salina Liberty, they're only going to get more revved up, Brian. We've seen this. It's a snowball effect. I would expect more of the same from this Liberty front three. Yeah, I think it's a situation now. You've got that 20-point lead. You want to finish this thing out, but you also want to make that statement. Give this team a little bit of something to think about, knowing that in two weeks you're going to meet again. I think it, it's a momentum builder for Salina. Coach O'Neill. he's the type of guy you said it. He doesn't ever want to stop. 48 to 28 our score this crowd we talk about them a lot Russ this place isn't sold out It's a very small crowd, but boy they have been loud here tonight. They were the same way last week against Sioux City First down and ten four wide receivers Bernard gets planted again this time by Jake Latterer. He does complete the pass To Jaden Swinson Swinson will have the first down to the 16 and we've talked about it all night with the one-two punch, you know, almost the one-two-three up front when you bring in Javier Dyer and Latimer, and then you can bring in Travis Taylor and put big Chris Mays in the middle, so it's just a big lineup for Salina. There's a little screen pass out to the right-hand side. Gain of about five on the play, first down and five. I'm gonna say almost four on the play. Omaha looking to speed it up here. You know, Derek Bernard trying to get his receiver set as we're, we're sitting at 310 left to go in the fourth quarter. Second down and five. Bernard back to pass. Here comes Detray Matthews. Bernard gets away, gets hit though by the second guy through and throws it away. That time it was Javier Dyer coming through. Dontre Matthews was the first one to come through and he got just avoided him. D Derek Bernard made a very nice play avoiding Detray, but then as he turned and looked around, it was Javier Dyer and Jake Latimer coming in again. Yeah, you know, we Derek Bernard playing in Salina here last year and probably wishing he was playing here again with as much as he's been dancing around, you know. He had the two-step going on across the way, and Derek Bernard's kind of been doing his own version of the two-step, running from the front three of Salina. It's a square dance, Russ. Come on. Square dance, two-step. It's all the same <laughs> thing. Third down and five. Bernard with an empty backfield. This time, Dyer coming in on him. And it's a free interception again. Here comes Dontre Matthews. He has Derek Bernard to beat. And Dontre up against the wall. He's going to get tackled at the five. Three interceptions in two weeks for Dontre Matthews. Give him credit. That's his second one tonight. And Dietre telling Travis Taylor, man, I see your sacks, man, blood. I see what you're doing up there. I'm going to give you some of the same here on the back end. Yep. He has been absolutely <laughs> fantastic over the last two games on this Liberty defense. Yeah, and we, we kind of been waiting for it since he came to Salina early. He kind of didn't didn't have much of a, a impact early in the first, you know, two, three games of the year. But in the last three weeks, Dietre is just, just having an incredible, incredible, not only game, but second half in every game. And what I love, Brian, it's the guys that have all joined this team here over the last few weeks that are most excited for Dontre Matthews. It's Kendrick Harper and it's Frankie Solomon Jr. out there. They were the first ones to congratulate him after the interception. Those are guys, and we've said it before, Coach Ron O'Neill has assembled what looks to be an all-star secondary here in Salina. Yeah, and it, and it seems like the chemistry, they're starting to play well with each other. Salina now at the five. After that return from Dontre, they go back to McKinney. McKinney reaching for the end zone. And the official trailing the play said it's not going to be close. He's actually spotted against the wall at the three. But Ron O'Neill trying to feed the beast of Daniel McKinney here. And McKinney's going to ask out of this game. He's going to ask for a substitute. Nope, he says never mind. Well, Matthew Craig looked like he was about to come in, but he's struggling to find his helmet. Now he picks it up as he was clear on the other end of the bench. So McKinney will stay in there as we approach the one-minute mark. And I think you can... Say it's safe to say, Salina is going to get a victory here in their final home game of the regular season. 20-point lead knocking on the door again. Low snap, Jackson pulls it out. Andrew looking, throws it at the last minute, and it's a touchdown! He found Daniel McKinney who won it out of the game, but instead he's going to have the hat trick. Three touchdowns in his Liberty debut for Daniel McKinney. And another six points on the board for the Liberty offense. 
Welcome to Salina and have yourself a game, Daniel McKinney. It's so good to see the chemistry that him and Andrew Jackson have have committed early. And like we talked about, this could be dangerous for the rest of the league, as good as these two have been in basically their first game together. 54 to 28, our score. As right now, Salina routing Omaha. Got a late kicking team member. It's Winston Green coming on. Still plenty of time, though. As they're waiting on the snap from Kelvin McCoy. A little low. Tracy Brooks is going to pick it up. Now Tracy making the look something happen. Tracy looking, looking. Going to go back across the game. Green goes to an offensive lineman. Actually, it's a defensive lineman playing blocking there. <laughs> Chris Mays turns around looks at Tracy Brooks like, what are you doing? He put his hand, it to me? I mean, he put his hand up like he was going to catch it, but <laughs> oh, Tracy man. Brooks just threw it just a hair over the outstretched arms of Chris Mays. That might have been the highlight of the night, Brian, if we could have got that done. I know Kamali Matthews wanted that ball. Yeah, Kamali was, he was going, yeah, hey, I'm the eligible guy out here. Throw it to me. But uh, just, a, just a bad thing. I, I honestly, it looked as if Tracy could have had time to put it back down. Unfortunately, in that situation, the timing was all off as Jimmy had already made that committed to that first step he would have had to shuffle to try to get it in but uh, nonetheless 54 28 a minute six to go things look good for Salina so you have a seven and one team rolling to Salina we talk about the schedules all the time guys but I think we need to touch on it again Omaha comes in they're seven and one okay they have three wins on the season over Oklahoma who's the expansion team in the league by the way Oklahoma never got placed on Salina's, Salina's schedule we don't play them at all this year They've also have two wins against Wichita, who's obviously struggling a little bit this year. They're not the same Wichita Force team as what they've had. There's five wins right there. Their other win came against the Texas Revolution when they were still functioning. Their other win, their seventh win, is a four-foot win against the Texas Revolution after they folded. That's seven wins right there. The loss came against Sioux City. Meanwhile, you have a schedule involving the Salina Liberty. Every single team they play was a playoff team from one year ago. Every single one. They have swept the Sioux City Bandits now 3-0 against Sioux City this year. They have lost their Achilles heel, and the losses have come in two games at Amarillo. Right now, I think that's the bridge that, that or the cross that Salina needs to bear. That's really the only chink in the armor that we've seen this year of the Salina Liberty. They've been very good here at home. The one loss here at home was against the Texas Revolution in a close game. But the additions that Heron O'Neill has made to this team are now coming to fruition, and we see what they're capable of. Here's a ball on a kickoff that goes over the wall. The Omaha tra player tried to get it. The free kick hit the wall. It'll be first and ten at that spot. Slap at one of the fans that was battling for that football with him after it went over the wall. And we are one second shy of the 60 second warning. So Derek Bernard and company will get one more play here before we have a stoppage for the last time out. I think they'll go ahead as soon as the teams get out, they'll start the clock, and there yep. you go, one minute. And there you go. 60 so second timeout. One minute timing rules time will ago, now be in effect. Media timeout. Is here. 90 seconds and then back to clean this one up. There's one minute left on the clock. Liberty up big here on KIA. Area athlete. get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at salinaregionalsportsmedicine.com. The 
Spring season is here and paintball fun is waiting for you at Elite Sports. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, five miles south of Salina, is open for the season. Get the group together and visit Elite Sports on Saturdays and Sundays during the spring and check out their new online booking system. Elite Sports features new low-impact paintballs for beginners or little ones so everyone can have more fun. Visit them online at SalinaPaintballComplex.com. Elite Sports Paintball Complex, open and waiting for you this weekend. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Had a quick start out of that 60-second timeout. They didn't even get the promotion in on the field. Omaha came out, and they wanted to snap the football. As you can imagine, they're wanting to take the rest of the time off this clock and probably get back on the bus. 54-28 to 28 is our score. 30 seconds left now. As Derek Bernard has taken Omaha in two plays, down inside the 10-yard line to the 7. Here comes Dontre Matthews again. Trying to get the sack, and Derek Bernard will run it for a touchdown. So that is the first touchdown that Omaha has scored since back with 12 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And we've talked about it that, you know, Coach wanted to put this defense together. He's been working on it all year from preseason to where we're at right now. He's been mixing and matching and bringing in guys to try to get that secondary mainly where he wants it. And he told us in pregame, I got the right pieces. I just got to get them all in the same group. He is a master recruiter. He is a master of the people that believe into his system. And I'm telling you, right now he has a whole team of them. He has a whole town that believes in this system. 54-34. After that touchdown, Omaha going for two. Bernard back in the pocket. Token pass rush. And now they dump it off, and it's dropped again. Another drop in the end zone by Jaden Swinson. That'll keep two points off the board. The score will remain a 20-point Liberty advantage with 20 seconds left to play. It'll be interesting to see here. You know, obviously, I wouldn't expect Omaha to come out and do an onside kick being down 20 points. But you never know in this game. And then another thing is with with what what's at stake between these two teams and what the past history between these two teams are is what Coach Ron O'Neill will do when he gets the ball back. Three games left for each one of these teams. The next three games for Salina all on the road. We've talked about it next Sunday on the 9th of June. There's a 405 kick against Wichita at Interest Bank Arena. And then the rematch between these two teams will take place on the 15th at Ralston Arena in Omaha. Then the last game of the season, the Liberty will make a road trip to Albuquerque to play the Duke City Gladiators. The last three games for Omaha. Next week, they will be at Amarillo. That's on a Monday night. And then they will come back home at Ralston Arena for the last two against Salina and against Sioux City. They go to Amarillo coming off right now which the Amarillo team is getting handled with 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter 49 to 21 by Duke City. Salina heading to Wichita like he said next Sunday for a 405 kickoff and the fours are getting beat by the Bandits right now 42 to 27 at the start of the fourth quarter. There is an onside pop-up kick, but it goes to the best hands on the team. That's Rashad Pargo. Pargo will take it out of harm's way and then go down sliding to his right hip at the 17-yard line. 19 seconds left on the clock, and Salina Liberty's offense will come out along with Andrew Jackson to put the icing on this one. Yeah, Rashad take, doing kind of the respect of the game there and going down because he caught it and took off to the left side, and there was absolutely nobody over there except for three Liberty players to lead block him into the end zone. So a good play nonetheless by Pargo, and just an all-around good game, and once again, a very dominating second half for the Salina Liberty. Tracy Brooks directly behind his quarterback, Andrew Jackson, with 19 seconds left to go. Omaha has two timeouts remaining. Jackson straight up the gut, and he will have it to the 15-yard line. That's a gain of three, and Omaha electing to not stop the clock here. 
So that'll do it. 54 to 34 is our final score. The Omaha Beef come in. Seven and two now. That's the end of the ball game. Final Liberty will go to six and three. And remember, I think it's worth mentioning, guys, the Liberty started the season at one and two. They have now won five of their last six games, and they are making a push for that Northern Division. Now they are just one game behind the Omaha Beef with one meeting remaining between the two teams at Ralston Arena. And I always encourage people, I said it in pregame as we talked to, to Ron O'Neill. Russ, you and I talked about it during this game. There's a couple of places that I would highly recommend going to see a Liberty Road game. Ralston Arena is probably at the top of the list, along with Tyson Event Center in Sioux City, Iowa. And what better way to go see a great game in a really great venue with great fans than go to Ralston Arena two weeks from today and see the rematch of this one. It should be a good one. Let's go down on the field. Brian Berner has Coach O momentarily wrangled up here. Let's take advantage of it. Coach, congratulations. Big win. Your defense, though, it seems like they turn it on second half. We definitely did. Um, we made some plays in the second half as far as getting the turnovers. We were close on a couple of them. Um, but the thing that was the difference tonight is execution in the secondary. The communication with the veterans that we have there definitely worked out well for us. And then up front, Trap was a monster all day. Travis Taylor was all over the field. I think he had two and a half sacks. Latimer was causing pressure. Javier was causing pressure. Dana was causing pressure. And when they wasn't causing pressure, they was knocking the ball down. So definitely excited by what we, we starting to understand what we really have now. On the offensive side, nice new addition, Daniel McKinney. Three touchdowns, one tremendous acrobatic catch. Oh, yeah, that's what we brought him in here for. I mean, I wanted him for the past. Ever since I met him in Dodge City, I mean, he's an animal, and just the thing about it is he really don't know everything just yet. He's still getting used to it. I mean, he's only had like one practice or so to try to figure everything out, but just his football IQ got him through this game with minimal um, mental mistakes. Just definitely happy that we got him, got him up here. Coach, it was a great win. Question would be this, did you show everything? Knowing you got to go back up oh, there? Oh, no. I didn't even show three-fourths of what we do um, or what we could have done um, because it was different things working that I didn't have to unveil anything. Um, not anything, but a, a lot. Um, the thing that helped us out, though, is when your defense plays like this here, I mean, you can do things like that. I mean, they were um, making plays all over the field, and it definitely helped us out big time of what we were calling offensively, giving us short fields. They scored a touchdown 12 seconds to go in the first quarter and not again until the last 30 seconds of the game. That's unbelievable. Well, it's dominant defense. And I mean, these guys, they take pride in what they do. Um, when you bring in a guy like Detroit, they bring that fire. You bring in a guy like Frankie, who's just got high football IQ. You bring in K-Hop, high football IQ. But I think the key was, is when we went back out and um, I remember our little meeting that we had with Barfield. That was the start of rebuilding that secondary because we knew what we had up front. So I was definitely happy with everything um, that transpired and it, it, it doesn't get too much better than this.